Legion Field when Alabama won six to nothing. They lead in the series 34-26-7. Tennessee has a three-game win streak going, and prior to that, Alabama had an 11-game win streak, and then prior to that, Tennessee had won four. So it's been a streak series, and the big question here is can the Volunteers continue with their three-game winning streak? Ray Perkins' Crimson Tide hopes to put a stop to that this afternoon. The Tide undefeated in the Southeastern Conference, but with a narrow loss to Penn State last week. I'd like to tell you about the coin toss. Alabama won the toss, deferred their choice till the second half. Tennessee will receive and go on offense to begin this game here today. The University of Tennessee Volunteers and the Crimson Tide of Alabama, one of the premier college football rivalries in the nation. Number 11, you see warming up on the sideline for Alabama is Mike Shula, the junior. 6'2", 200 pounds from Miami. And yes, Mike Shula is the son of Don, as you've been told so many times before. Mike Shula played very little at the beginning of 1984 as you look at that comparison. But as you'll notice, he's played every snap here for Alabama this year in five games and has thrown only 14 more passes, but seven touchdowns, only one interception, and Mike Shula leads the nation in passing efficiency. As you look at the difference in his stats as his sophomore year and his junior year, Ray Perkins said Mike Shula's my quarterback when he went to spring training this year, and it's really helped bring this tied team together. The man you just saw who wears number 10 is Tony Gunslinger Robinson, a senior from Tallahassee, Florida, and he'll be going on offense to lead this volunteer attack. Tony Robinson is fifth in efficiency, passing efficiency in the nation, I might add. Number 36 is Pete Panuska. He will be taking the kickoff from Van Tiffen. Slight breeze here today. However, it's swirling on the field and shouldn't have any big effect on this ball game unless the wind picks up. Van Tiffen's kickoff is going to carry Panuska back to the back of the end zone. And out of the end zone it goes, and the Volunteers will set up their offense on the 20-yard line. Tony Robinson, he's thrown for over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns, heads this Tennessee offense. A freshman, 28, Keith Davis, starts at tailback today. He's a breakaway threat for Tennessee. McGee, Swanson, and Plink Scales will swap at the wide receiver's positions. They have three very good ones. Jeff Smith at the bottom of your screen is the tight end. Best offensive lineman, perhaps, is number 68, Bruce Wilkinson, the left tackle for the University of Tennessee. First play from the line of scrimmage from Legion Field in Birmingham. to the freshman about eight yards for Keith Davis a freshman from Nashville tackled by 58 Wayne Davis and that crimson tide bend but both don't break defense these fellas don't break or bend much here John Han Kurt Jarvis Brent Soule really the heart and soul excuse the pun of that Alabama defense the linebackers are excellent too the outside Randy Rockwell Cornelius Bennett back from the injury and in the inside they're solid some suspects in the secondary we'll see of that. Second down to Tennessee. First down, Tennessee, William Howard, the 225-pound fullback, number 35, with the first down for the Volunteers. Bob, starting off, Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, is giving his cornerbacks some help. Obviously, threatened a little bit by the passing skills of Tony Robinson and this big threat wide receivers. And uh, Tennessee's going to try to run the ball at him, I think, to draw those linebackers back in. A lot of pre-snap motion by Tennessee, and you'll see Tony Robinson calling a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage today. Third straight running throw, Keith Davis. A little bit of running room. Davis to the 41-yard line, a gain of about five yards before Wayne Davis, number 58, the inside linebacker, makes the stop for Ray Perkins, Crimson Tide. Ray Perkins feels this team is special. He says that over and over again. Feels like it's not got the great, great players, with the exception of Cornelius Bennett, but uh, a lot of character throughout the squad. It is second down six from the 41-yard line of Tennessee. Three wide receivers in. Typical passing play for Tennessee, but they're going to run it again. They hand it off to Howard, the fullback, who stumbles and gets only a couple of yards. So. Tennessee electing to keep it on the ground, and Tim, as you say, it may be because that's what Alabama's defense is giving them thus far. I think so. Randy Rockwell is, is spreading out. He's uh, out in the position where he can jam the wide receiver. I think they're a little bit concerned about uh, Britt Cooper on the corner going one-on-one one -on -one against Eric Swanson or Timmy McGee. Three wide outs again. Third down four from the 43. It's complete to Clint Scales. To the first down. Tackled by 21, Freddie Robinson. It'll depend on the mark of the football. 
Tony Robinson signaling to the sideline that there is a first down, and so does the referee. First down, Tennessee. You get a chance to watch this again. This ball should never have been completed. Basically, it was thrown against a two-deep, five-short zone, which meant the cornerback should have been up close in that flat area. Robinson makes the read. <laughs> Look at that. He gets it out there in a hurry. I don't think we can blame Freddie Robinson too much for not breaking that ball up because you saw the velocity which with Tony fires the football. First down 10. Tennessee at the 47-yard line of the Volunteers. Opening drive for Tennessee. Opening quarter of play from Legion Field in Birmingham. Robinson goes down. Number 79, Brent Soule. Broke through and got him right up the middle. That's something that rarely happens to Tony Robinson. But it's something that Perkins Tide has to do. A loss of 11 yards if they're going to contain this great quarterback. We're watching Bennett now work against Bruce Wilkerson. And this is going to be a great matchup all day. As you can see, he's getting help from number 75, John Bruin. Cornelius Bennett is a load to handle one-on-one. -on -one, and they'll try to have two men on him as much as they can. You see that Alabama's defense is tough in the opening quarter. They have not allowed a touchdown. Tennessee now with a second 21 from the 36-yard line. the 32 Charles Wilson from Pritchard Alabama by the way Tennessee moved it out here very easily as we say that happens so many times with this Alabama defense we saw Vanderbilt move up and down the field but not into the end zone There's a little difference in the defensive philosophies of both these coaches as you mentioned in the opening Bob Tennessee is going to put pressure on uh, Alabama. They're, they're a little bit more of a risk-taking defense. They feel they have to be a little bit more resourceful. Alabama's going to be conservative. Third down, 22 from the 35-yard line. Robinson, four-man rush. Robinson in a lot of trouble. Down he goes at the 27-yard line, and listen to this Legion Field crowd. This is what Alabama has to have as you watch Hand working against Wilkerson. They flush Robinson out of the pocket. Bennis comes in for the kill, but a nice job by the Alabama secondary. Good drops by their linebackers. Good deep drops that permitted, excuse me, prevented Robinson from throwing that intermediate cut that he was looking for. Here's Bob Garman, who had trouble punting last week, only averaging 38 yards. He's punting to Albert Bell, number one, at his 31. Bell. To the 38 yard line good field position for Alabama last week against Florida the Gators started on an average drive at their 38 it's something Johnny Major said he hoped to avoid today but field position could play a role there is a penalty marker on the field that was a 42 yard punt and a nine yard return by Albert Bell of Alabama the referee Robert Alet talking to the University of Tennessee captain sellout crowd 10-16 to go, quarter number one, scoreless game. Waiting to see what happens with the committee meeting down there. There was a penalty marker. They may be deciding which team was in possession at the time. Personal foul, face mask, is the call. Against who, we don't know, but Robert Aylett will, we hope, eventually let us know. Normally, the face mask would be against the team defending, and that could be Tennessee, and it is. The mark-off tacked on. to the 46-yard line of Tennessee. A very big mark-off. Dead ball foul. Face mask. Tennessee. Defensive team. First down. 15-yard penalty on that face mask, Bob. I'm not... I didn't see it. Uh, well, we're going to take a commercial timeout here. We'll be back where Alabama has excellent field position at the Tennessee 46-yard line. This is Turner Network Television. When it's freezing cold and the sirens blow and the mercury's down to 20 below, you don't need problems, you gotta go. That's why America goes with Prestone. A fresh fill of Prestone 2 antifreeze fights freeze up and rust up too. A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. Get the Prestone difference. America goes and goes and goes with Prestone. Get 
get pumped for America's game. The NBA. Exclusively on Superstation WTBS starting October 21st. For Alabama, Mike Shula will lead the way offensively. Mike Shula leads the nation in passing efficiency, has thrown seven touchdown passes, only one interception. As a matter of fact, this Alabama offensive team, as you look at the rest of their starting lineup, has committed only three turnovers all year. One interception and two fumbles. Hard to believe that they've only turned the ball over three times. First down, 10 from the 46 of Tennessee. Shula's going to throw. Batted down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. He was looking for Bobby Humphrey out of the backfield. I think Fred Bennett, number 95, the middle guard, got a hand on the ball for the Tennessee Volunteers. There's that Tennessee defense. Scott Bennett, Mark Hovanek. Hovanek, a good pass rusher. There for the linebacker position, Brian Kimbrough, playing for the injured Tyrone Robinson. Dale Jones, the big playman, number 54. You'll be seeing a lot of him today. You'll also see a lot of number seven, Chris White. He's around the ball a great deal. The free safety for Tennessee. For Alabama, second down 10 from the 46 of the Volunteers. Scoreless football game. Bell in motion. Here's Humphrey. The 42-yard line of Tennessee. Freshman Bobby Humphrey from Birmingham grew up in the shadows of Legion Field. Last year when Alabama played Boston College in their uh, opener, Bobby Humphrey was selling Cokes over in Section 42. And now here he is, starting for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, his high school is right near here, too. Ray Perkins said, yeah, I spend a lot of time in this neighborhood recruiting that young man. Happy he did. Third down, six Alabama at the 42 of Tennessee. Scoreless game, first quarter. Shula to try his second pass of the day. Incomplete, looking for Humphrey. Thrown high, would have been a tough catch, covered by number seven, Chris White. So Shula's 0 for 2 throwing the football, something you rarely see, and you also, something you rarely see is, is Shula throwing more passes than Robinson. Tony Robinson's only thrown once. Alabama can't convert and can't make anything really happen out of excellent field position. Their punter is Chris Moore, a freshman from Thompson, Georgia, and there is number one, Andre Kramer. He broke a kickoff return against Alabama last year that played a big role in Tennessee's come-from-behind victory. It looks like it's going into the end zone and does for the touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, a 42-yard punt by Chris Moore, and the Volunteers will go on offense for the second time this afternoon. This could be a defensive struggle, even though Tennessee's explosive offensively. We'll see what Robinson and company have in mind when we return. The Delta Professionals always make you feel like you're on top of the world. Delta gets you there. Get popped because Super Action returns with America's Game, the NBA. The world champion Los Angeles Lakers battle the Indiana Pacers in the Hall of Fame Classic. Live at 8.05 Eastern on the Superstation, Monday. Send the cheer for our great nation. Super Sports, WTBS, great American sports. It's Ohio State 7 and up no Purdue when Jim Carsados finds Mike Lanise, who takes it away from Mike Weaver for the 12 yard touchdown. And it's Ohio State leading Purdue 14 to nothing. Oh, and Tim Foley just became severely depressed as his alma mater trails Ohio State by two touchdowns. They'll come back. They're yeah, playing well this year. Just letting them feel good for a while, setting them up. <laughs> Tennessee. From their own 20 yard line, dodged a field position bullet when Alabama failed to convert. Had the ball first and 10 at Tennessee's 46. Tennessee continuing to run the ball out to the 25 yard line. William Howard is hit by 58 Wayne Davis, Davis' third tackle of this young game. A couple of other scores Notre Dame leading 20th ranked Army, 7 to nothing. When was the last time Army was ranked above Notre Dame? Well, of course, a lot of rumors about Jerry Faust and him needing to win the next two games to keep the job. There you see the other score from the ACC. Second down five from the 25, Tennessee. They're going to run it again to the freshman Keith Davis. 
He gets to the 27-yard line and not much further, bringing up another conversion play. This freshman, Davis, has stepped in here and taken the starting uh, tailback position. Pete Panuska had been playing that role, some Charles Wilson also. But Keith Davis is the kind of runner who just stepped in, and he they say probably running back, Tim, is the quickest position for a young man to be able to break into a game because it's just pure talent. Right, it is. And it's just that they've got the skill, and it's just a matter of understanding the blocking schemes. Third down three, Tennessee, out of the eye. Three wide receivers in the game. Hits to Davis. Needs a block and gets it. First down. To the 40-yard line goes the freshman, Randy Rockwell, number 57, with the stop for Alabama. The Tennessee moving the ball, but remember, this happened on the first drive, and it was right about here where Tennessee stalled. We're going to watch the Tennessee receivers block on this play. It's something that you don't often see. Receivers don't get involved in the contact on a lot of football teams, but for Tennessee, they talk a lot that, about that a lot. Kippy Brown, the receiver coach, stresses that, and uh, they do a fine job with it. Charles Wilson also got a good block on the play. There's a 13-yard run by Davis. Robinson's going upstairs, looking for McGee. It's picked off the first interception of the year for this Alabama secondary. Down at the... Eight and a half yard line, 21, Freddie Robinson with the ball. Good protection here by the Tennessee line. Robinson gets it off, it's a little bit underthrown. And Freddie Robinson is running down with Timmy McGee. Goes up well for the football. He's going to be to the wide side of the field a lot today. Look at that. Good job by the defensive back going up and making the catch. So often you see the receiver come over at the top and take it away from the defender. Can't maintain his footing, but a fine play, and I'm sure a, a confidence builder for the secondary, which was concerned about not having one interception going into this football game. Field position, however, puts Alabama in a hole at the eight and a half yard line. For young Mike Schulick, he has three wide receivers in there on a first down ten. Only about a couple of yards for fullback Craig Turner. Turner and Humphrey will play most of the way at the running back positions, but Alabama has some other strong backs, too. Chester Braggs, Murray Hill, Gene Jelks, Mike Bobo. We'll see probably six or seven Alabama backs before this game ends. Tennessee's secondary is doing, doing an excellent job, Bob, of disguising their coverage. They're not letting Mike Shula see what they're in until the ball is being snapped. Second down eight from the 11. Scoreless game, first quarter. Bobby Humphrey. To the 14-yard line. Mm -hmm. And down goes the freshman. There's Tony Robinson. Robinson one out of two for only five yards. And, of course, he threw that interception. He's on the phone with his mentor, Walt Harris. Walt uh, hosted Illinois, Coach Steve Wilson and Tony Eason. <laughs> uh, maybe Tony was placing a call to uh, the other Robinson, Freddie. <laughs> That's it, Freddie. Good play. Freddie says, Tony, I already answered your call. Third down five from the 14-yard line. In motion out of the backfield, Bobby Humphrey. Schulich, the shovel pass, the turn of the fullback. Shy of, well, excuse me, he got the first down. He's shy of the 20, but he got enough of the first down, depending on the spot of the ball. There's Craig Turner. He's a senior from Gaithersburg, Maryland, and a very dependable back. Often that means that he's not that good. That's not the story with Turner. He is, in fact, dependable. He's a good receiver and a good blocker. They may have to bring the sticks in here. It'll all depend on the spot of the ball. Looks like he got it to me. Looks like he got a good effort by Craig Turner to get it. He was hit about two yards short of the first down marker. He's got the first down. Shovel pass, a very effective pass for the offense. The linebacker is watching the quarterback. As the quarterback move, moves past the fullback, the linebacker now thinks get depth. And as he begins to do that. Of course, the quarterback just pops the ball up to the fullback, kind of a delayed draw, and the fullback's got more room to move in. And remember, if he drops it, it's simply an incomplete pass. First down 10 from the 19. Here's Humphrey. Tough yardage over there on the right side, about three or four. Tommy Sims, number 16, coming up from the safety position. Tennessee will play Davis, White, Sims a lot at the safety. They rotate three guys in there. And Humphrey, by the way, we're speaking of freshman Bobby Humphrey. Of course, Alabama would like to have been playing Kerry Good in that position, but Good was injured again and had to have surgery on his knee once again. He's going to be out at least four more weeks. He was freshman of the year in the SEC, has been injury plagued since then. We wish that young man. Manuel. Second down five from the 24. Nothing going this time. 
Gain of maybe one for Humphrey. Mark Hovanek from Yorktown, Virginia with the tackle for Tennessee. Ray Perkins started his coaching career at Mississippi State, went to the Patriots and then the San Diego Chargers and then was picked tab by George Young, one of the fine minds in professional football, a general manager of the New York Giants to lead his giant football team. And then taking the job at Alabama, doing a great job. Seven ties in this series. Some the, the average score in the last four years has been 32-31. First down run by Humphrey. He was tackled by 16 Tommy Sims. We're going to our studios in Atlanta now for this college football update. Army with the ball. Second play of the game. Quarterback Torrey Crawford pitches to William Lampley. He fumbles the pitch. Cornell Taylor later scored. Notre Dame goes on top if they had great field position, 7-0. Well, Tim, they should have tried the shovel pass, and that wouldn't have been a fumble. <laughs> First down 10, Alabama. At the 29-yard line, they started this drive after the interception at the 8 and a half. Out of the eye, Shula the throw. Wide open, Greg Richardson. Down at the 45 of Alabama. Charlie Davis with the stop for Tennessee, number 22, and Mike Shula put that one on the money for a 16-yard gain. He's now two out of four throwing the ball. Watch Humphrey. You see Humphrey running out of your screen to the right. They've got a quick screen set up on the right, and it's an option for Mike Shula. If he can't get it into Richardson, dump it out to Humphrey. He saw enough daylight to throw it into Richardson and put it right on the numbers. By the way, there's Greg Richardson playing a little bit hurt, but he's a clutch receiver for Alabama. We're going to try to be talking to Mike's dad, Don, who's watching down in Miami at halftime, if that works out. Craig Turner running on the right side for about four out near the midfield stripe for the fullback. Tim Foley's favorite coach, I know, is Don Shula. Ray Perkins played for Don Shula while he was at Baltimore. Old Perk. Caught a lot of footballs in an Alabama jersey. Still holds the record for most yards receiving in the Orange Bowl and in the Sugar Bowl. Second down six from the 49-yard line. The Tide driving from their eight and a half. Here's Bobby Humphrey. Tennessee pursuing well, but look at that young man cut against the grain. Inside volunteer territory, about three yards short of the first down. Fred Bennett and Tommy Sims with the stop. The man that makes the play here is Dale Jones, number 54. Watch this. Watch him take on the guard, stuff the guard, stay parallel to the line of scrimmage, get rid of the blocker, and now get to the football. Turns the play back in. Doesn't actually make the tackle, but fine play by Dale Jones. It's third down three from the 48-yard line of Tennessee. 3.09 to go, quarter number one, scoreless ball game. Albert Bell in motion. And contact at the line of scrimmage. That was 95, Fred Bennett with the contact. Once that line is set, the center cannot move the ball again. Sometimes it's against the center for moving it. We'll see. Offsides, Tennessee. Nope, the guilty finger of justice points at Fred Bennett. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, 3.09 to go. Quarter number one, First Alabama ball. nothing, Tennessee nothing. Defensive offside. First down. That was enough for the first down. They spot the ball at the 43 of Tennessee, and Alabama continues this drive. Kind of credit Mike Shula for that one, that voice inflection, the ability to draw the defense offside. Hand off to the fullback, Turner. Nowhere to go. Maybe a yard. Kelly Ziegler, one of the inside linebackers for Tennessee. Tennessee's linebackers starting this game are Dale Jones on the outside and Brian Kimbrough with Ziegler and Darren Miller in the middle. Kelly Ziegler, he's out of Miami, Florida. Went to Palmetto High School. Played down there for Jess Davis. They're replacing Tolls and Xander. They were about as good a pair of inside linebackers as we saw last year, Tim. And they're both playing in the NFL now. Second down eight. Alabama from the 41 of Tennessee. Shula under pressure. Gets it away to Turner. Turner hit at the 40 and stopped shy of the 40-yard line. Tommy Sims playing Craig Turner very well out of the backfield and good pressure by Dale Jones. He was just all over Mike Shula. Well, Jones is blitzing on this play. You're going to see him coming in from your left to the right. Just a play action coming out there. 
uh, in a sense naked knows that if it's a blitz guy has to get rid of it right away. That's one that Shula has to read. Big conversion play for Alabama here. Third down eight from the 41 of Tennessee. Five defensive backs in for the Volunteers. The 12th play of this drive, which started at the eight and a half yard line of Alabama. Shula with an audible at the line. Tennessee puts it. Shula throw it. Incomplete. And the Alabama drive stalls. At the 41-yard line of Tennessee, Clay Whitehurst was the intended receiver. He's being covered by 14 Terry Brown. Tennessee's giving them a little bit different look on defense. They're doubling the wide receiver, Albert Bell. And then they're leaving Tommy Sims open in the middle to pick up that check down route or that slant in route that Swanson was trying to run. There's Chris Moore. Chris Moore is a freshman from Thompson, Georgia. Had a good year punting, 42 yards on his first one, trying to get this one out of bounds. He does not. Punts it in and out of the end zone from the 41, so we'll credit him with a 41-yard punt. We'll be back in just a moment. We're in the first quarter with only 126 remaining. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Well, this year there's something different to say about Sylvania Superset. Really? 19-inch Sylvania Superset didn't beat Sony again? Well, no. You see, this year instead of the 19, we tested the new 20-inch Sylvania Superset. 20-inch? Yes, and when we asked over a thousand people which 20-inch had the best overall color picture, Moore chose the Sylvania Superset over RCA and Zenith and, uh, Sony too. Nandeska! Call Nandeska! Sylvania beat Sony again? No shit! I want to tell you something you know nothing about. Mighty Auto Parts. Across the country, pros like Joe have been using Mighty for 20 years. Good stuff. Yet nobody knows the Mighty name. What? What do you mean nobody knows the Mighty? I know him. Yeah, but Mighty isn't sold to the public. Don't have to be. I'm sold. Oh, so I guess you can tell everybody how good Mighty Parts are. <laughs> what a car leaves here, it tells. Mighty Perform. Take it from a pro. In that Notre Dame Army game, it's Steve Berline, Notre Dame's quarterback, hitting Tim Brown on a 19-yard touchdown pass all alone in the end zone. There was a missed coverage, and Bob Neal, even you could have caught that one. It's 14 to nothing, Notre Dame over Army. Allie Hawkins, you probably don't know that I lead the NCAA college broadcasters in receiving for the third straight year. First down 10 from the 20-yard line, scoreless ball game. Tennessee ball. They hand it to freshman Keith Davis again. Good cut. First down to the 33-yard line. And this freshman Keith Davis is a workhorse. That's his fifth carry of the day, and he's got nearly 40 yards. Tennessee's lining up with three wide receivers. They're running to the side of the two wide receivers. Randy Rockwell is kind of stretched out. You see him trying to fight his way back into the play. Now they're going to have to make a decision. If they continue to run the ball like that, they're going to have to bring Randy Rockwell closer to the, the ball. First down 10 from the 33. They give it to Keith Davis again to about the 36-yard line. This freshman is 6 feet tall, 190, which is really almost the prototype size for a tailback. He's, he's big enough, and there's Smokey, the blue tick hound mascot of the Tennessee Volunteers. Second down, seven from the 36-yard line, Volunteers. Three wide out for the game now for Tennessee. Scales, whoa, couldn't hold on to it, and Freddie Robinson had an opportunity for an interception with nothing but green in front of him, but the ball was tipped out of bounds and goes incomplete. So this Tennessee passing game isn't exactly untracked. Robinson one out of four for only five yards and one interception thus far. Good job in the secondary by Alabama. They've got a good scheme. You don't, you don't permit a touchdown to be scored from you against you, excuse me, in the first quarter without having good coaching and good preparation. There you see Ronnie Zook. He's the defensive secondary coach for uh, Tennessee talking to his players. Third and seven from the 36. Alabama with a rush right up the middle. Screen to the left side to Wilson. To the 45-yard line. He's close enough for a Tennessee first down. First down, Volunteers. Good run after the catch by the sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama. 
And a good block by Joey Klinkscales kind of freed up Davis, permitted him to get that yardage. Bruin and Galbraith out front, out in front of that play. As you see, Johnny Majors. He's got himself a fine football team this year. A lot of senior talent on offense. From the 45-yard line of Tennessee, first down 10 ball. Scoreless game, closing moments of the first quarter. Keith Davis. That's a good block. Gets about four yards out near midfield as we come to the end of the first quarter at Legion Field in Birmingham. 75,808. They are jammed in here today for one of the premier football rivalries in the nation. This is Turner Network Television. For our stations along the line, we've missed commercial position six, and our next commercial will be number seven, and we'll make up the missed spot in the next quarter. Coach Lyon, he's back! He can't be back. He's sick in the hospital. Yeah, they said he might never come back. All right, lunkheads, laps in 30 seconds. Today, more people survive cancer of the colon, thanks in part to a test that provides early detection. And Eckerd pharmacists have given out over a million of these tests free. Mr. Connolly, what's so funny? I'm just glad to have you back, Coach. To an Eckerd pharmacist, nothing's more important than your health. Mario and Dre. Hey, Dreddy. Helen Casey. Next week on Super Football Saturday, top-ranked power Georgia unleashes freshman passing sensation James Jackson against upset-minded Kentucky. Then on Super Football Saturday night, the name of the game is defense for California, where they battle powerful UCLA and their rambling, gambling offense. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Super Football Saturday at noon at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Superstation next week. Today's game is being brought to you in part by the new Valvoline Four Guard, the motor oil for today's harder working four cylinder engines. Opening play of the second quarter, scoreless ball game. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Legion Field in Birmingham, Tennessee, and Alabama. Keith Davis hit in backfield. Oh, and buddy, he was hit. John Hand weighs 275. Stand Six feet seven, a senior from Silicaga, and he'll be a first round draft choice in the pros. He is a big fella. Saw him the other night in Dreamland, getting some ribs. Obviously, got some energy out of those ribs. Stuck it to Keith Davis, beat the job of the Tennessee offensive lineman, and made the stop. I'd say he got some ribs there, the ribs of Keith Davis. And <laughs> speaking of Dreamland, Keith, made, <laughs> he was hit. Third down eight from the 47, Tennessee. Good protection for Robinson. Dumps it to Keith Davis. Look at his speed for the freshman. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line of Alabama. Ricky Thomas chasing Davis out of bounds. That was a 25-yard reception and run for the freshman. Having himself a good game. He wasn't hurt that much by the tackle. I think this is what scares the defensive coaches the most, Bob. His ability to maneuver in the pocket by time gets it to Keith Davis, breaks the perimeter of the defense to the wide side of the field, and if it's not great hustle by Ricky Thomas, might have gone all the way. Definitely Tennessee's deepest penetration. They had to punt the first time through an interception last time. From the 28, first down 10. Here's Charles Wilson. Inside the 20 to the 19-yard line goes the sophomore, 32, Charles Wilson, who's alternating with Keith Davis out of the backfield, the tailback spot. What Tennessee is doing is pulling two linemen to the side of the two receivers. McGee is doing a good job of getting in the path of Randy Rockwell, preventing him from closing it down tight. So they're getting those six, eight-yard gains. Second down two at the 20. Robinson up with a audible. Sometimes he calls a whole new play. Sometimes he just checks off a pattern or something. He does that a lot. Oh, in trouble. Incomplete. Short hopped. Intended for number nine, Vince Carter. But that's something that Tony Robinson does so well. There was great pressure by 78 John Hand, but it's hard to get a hand on Tony Robinson. This time, Freddie Robinson, the cornerback, set him up a little bit, lined up a little bit deeper. Robinson felt like he could get that quick out in there, that quick pop. When the ball was snapped, Freddie was coming and prevented Robinson from throwing the ball. He had to bring it back down and was fortunate to avoid a sack. Big conversion here. 
Tennessee's four out of five on third down. It's third down two at the 20 of Alabama. They're going to run the ball. They give it to big fullback Howard. It's close. I don't know if he got it or not. They need to go to the 18-yard line. There's William Howard, who's a sophomore from Lima, Ohio. Alternates at fullback with big Sam Henderson. They're going to bring the sticks in to measure. It's very close. If Tennessee has to go for a field goal, they have a very good young kicker by the name of Carlos Reves, who's replacing his brother, Fouad, who was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. There you see the measurement. It's short by about three, four inches. Johnny Majors has elected to go for it on fourth down at the 18 and a half yard line. Critical play in the early moments of the second quarter. Johnny Majors gambling at the 18 and a half yard line of Alabama. The crowd getting into it now. short yardage, but they're also going to be conscious of where Cornelius Bennett lines up. Did he get it? Robinson says yes. Tennessee fans say yes. Alabama fans say no. <laughs> Johnny Major said, I'll wait and see. William Howard carried the ball. You Henderson and Panuska and Davis were back there with him. You saw what happened there, Bob. They went on a long count. They tried to get it for free. Robinson tried to jump the Alabama defense. Good job by Alabama watching the ball, not jumping off sides. Here come the sticks. I'll stretch it out, and you'll get a good view if we can get those guys to move their legs there. You see Tony Robinson with his sweatbands around his ankles. <laughs> his ankle's about the size of a lot of people's wrists. Here it comes. First down by the nose of the ball. Let's take a look at it. Robinson's at the line of scrimmage, barking out the signals. The offensive linemen fire out. Good penetration by the Alabama defense. It's hard to play it any better than that. Joe Godwin coming over the top. Good job by both teams on that play. First down, Tennessee. We saw four or five fourth down gambles in our FSU Auburn telecast last week, and now we've seen one early in the second quarter here that paid off for Johnny Majors. First and 10 from the 18. Here's Keith Davis. What an excellent job of running the ball for the young freshman. Down to the seven and a half yard line. He was tackled by 20 Britton Cooper and 57 Randy Rockwell. Right in front of the Tennessee cheering section. Missouri out in front of Nebraska. Everything going right for Missouri these days with the World Series. And now they're leading Nebraska early. Ohio State handling Purdue 17 nothing second quarter. How about that one? The Ragin' Cajuns at Gainesville, Florida are handing the Gators a standoff in the second quarter. Here, first down goal from the eight for Tennessee. Scoreless game, second quarter. Robinson changing the play. Alabama calling timeout. Wisely so. It was Cornelius Bennett who looked to the sideline and did that. Bennett definitely the leader of that Alabama defensive team. Johnny Majors will have a chance to think it over a little bit, too. It's first and goal from the eight. We'll be right back. Not so very long ago, the average four-cylinder engine looked something like this. But these days, four-cylinder engines look a little more like this. That's why we develop new Valvoline Four Guard motor oil, specially formulated to protect today's harder-working, more complex four-cylinder engines. And it won't break down, even after 7,500 miles. Times have definitely changed. So maybe it's time to change your oil to new Valvoline Four Guard. To John Kaiser, who had six grand openings in three days, Republic Airlines awards the comforts of perks. Yes, I know. To Gary McKee, who had to laugh at the same joke six times, Republic awards the executive sweet perk. You've earned it. And to Nell McCarran, who had to dress for success in six cities, Republic awards a free trip after only 20,000 miles. I've earned it. We make you feel like flying Republic Airlines. Minnesota with the ball, first score of the game. Quarterback Ricky Foggy to Valdez Baylor, who waits for his blocks, then goes wide. Minnesota on top of Indiana, 7-0. Back to Bob and Tim. Here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. It's first and goal from the 8 for Tennessee. They started at their 20. This is the 13th play of the drive. Looking for Klinsky. 
Scales, he was hit in the end zone. Clink Scales was hit by the defensive back. 34, Ricky Thomas, and penalty markers went down. Looks like Alabama defensive pass interference in the end zone. They were looking for clink scales. Robinson just threw a, I don't know, Tim, what do you call that? A fade? That's correct. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Basically what that means, a wide receiver just trying to fade to the corner of the end zone. No really described cutter route. Just run away from the defensive back. Clink scale starting to wait for the ball. The defensive back at that point is beat. What he should try to do is get his head and shoulders around, locate the football. Here's the announcement on the penalty. Ray Perkins unhappy, of course. Defensive pass interference. First down. Inside the 20-yard line, they spot that ball at the two-yard line on defensive pass interference because obviously they can't give them the 15-yard penalty from the eight. So instead of half the distance, they take it to the two-yard line. There it is, first and goal, Tennessee. Scoreless game, 12 minutes to go, second quarter. Double tight ends for the Volunteers. They give it to the fullback. It's William Howard to about the half-yard line. Denied the goal line, but he's about a half a yard away. It'll be second down goal. This Alabama defense has, we say they're the bend but don't break. They've bent as far as they'll be allowed to bend now. No breaking allowed inside the one. They spotted at the one, by the way. They played well all year, Bob. Joe Kynes and his assistants have done a nice job with the Alabama defense, especially considering Cornelius Bennett has not been available with the exception of the first game. Davis and Henderson in the eye. Wilson now lines up as a wing for a power formation. And there's timeout for Tennessee. Don't say this isn't a big game to everybody. The nerves are on edge for the coaches, the players, and the fans. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Who's going to be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Oh. Sipping on a cold course light, partying right. Hello there. Who should have made the scene on a course light all the way? Come on down to the silver bullet. See who beat you with the silver Here. bullet. Who was that? I don't know, but he left the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Four-cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever, even when they're just idling. But watch this. Even after 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. The SEC football record book includes schedules, rosters, and statistics on all 10 SEC teams, plus all-time records of the nation's most competitive football conference. For your copy, mail your check or money order for $7 to football record book in Birmingham. First and goal, second and goal from the one, Tennessee. Davis in motion. Here's a pitch to Wilson. Touchdown, Volunteers. drive for the Volunteers. They started at their 20. First score in this ball game, Tennessee 6, Alabama nothing. Carlos Reves is in for the point after attempt. Big play, Bob, was a little uh, check down to Keith Davis. He caught it and went a long way. It should have been a six-yard gain. He turned it into about a 30-yarder. Point after is good. 7 nothing, Tennessee had control of the ball for five minutes and 14 seconds on that drive. We'll be back to Legion Field in Birmingham right after this. Every day, BMW presents a comprehensive report on the state of automotive technology, not through some dry dissertation or the theoretical vacuum of a laboratory, but rather through a more appropriate vehicle. 
the BMW 735i, a luxury sedan that translates the intricacies of technology into that very elusive commodity called fun. Four-cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever, even when they're just idling. But watch this. Even after 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. Tony Robinson directed these volunteers on an 80-yard drive in 14 plays, and this is the scoring play. See that hand coming out of the top right of your picture? They're changing a the coverage. You get the defense thinking about something else instead of being aggressive, and here's what happens. Dave Douglas, a good block. Harry Galbraith, nice block there. Leading the way. Knocking Alabama back into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. And they ran right past Cornelius Bennett, with Bennett, who was kicked out of there with a good block. Here's Reves for the kickoff. Tennessee leads 7-0, 11-12 to go first half of play. Reves with not quite as strong a leg as his brother, but that's pretty strong to the back of the end zone goes Bobby Humphrey. He'll touch it down, and Alabama trailing now. Will take over the ball for the third time this afternoon. They went four yards on their first possession, 50 on their second one, but both times had to punt the ball. There's the scoring drive details for you. Tennessee fans in a corner of Legion Field, right behind the graphic you see on your screen there. They can raise a lot of ruckus. You read the newspaper here. They love to see them come to Birmingham. They say the volunteers buy more souvenirs than anybody in the conference. Murray Hill, 45, and 44, Craig Turner is running back for Alabama now. There's Murray Hill, the freshman, to the 31-yard line. Murray Hill from Atmore, Alabama. Only 5'8", he's a water bug type runner, tackled by 16, Tommy Sims. They have got some fantastic freshman running backs at Alabama. Jelks, Hill, and of course, Bobby Humphreys. They're going to be solid there for the next three years. It'll be first down 10, Alabama at the 31-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Slot left formation, backs in the eye. Murray Hill looked like he didn't know exactly where to go there. Let's see if he does now. He knows where to go this time. To the 42-yard line, the freshman. Kelly Ziegler, number 49, with a tackle. And Hill had made a move to the left and then lined back up in the eye and then took the ball and ran to the right side for another first down. Good job here by Thornton Chandler. Hill gives him a little juke. I think he was a little bit confused, but nice job by Chandler knocking out the linebacker to create that seam that Hill could slice up into. Same formation, slot left. First down, 10 Alabama at the 42 of the time this time. Tennessee leading 7 0. Here we go again with Hill. More running room. About seven yards this time, close to the midfield stripe. They'll spot it right near the 50 yard line, about the 49. Chris White, number seven, with the tackle for Tennessee. At the time, David Gilmer and uh, Haas Johnson both got a nice block to the wide side of the field. As Perkins looks on, one of the more intense coaches in the country, I'd say. Wouldn't you say, Bob? Yes, I'd he, say. He apologized for smiling the last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Tim and I were talking to him down here at Legion Field when the side worked out yesterday. He ruins my image when I see smiling. He was happy with that win over Vanderbilt. First down Alabama, they give to Craig Turner, 44 to fullback. He drives inside Tennessee territory. Alabama started this drive at their 20, and now the tide driving very much in the same manner as Tennessee. And the Volunteers giving up uh, about, uh, what is that, 34 yards here early on this drive. Most of it running, most of it by Murray Hill, the freshman tailback. A lot of people wondered how badly damaged Alabama would be if Kerry Good could not play at tailback. You see, they haven't been that damaged. Here comes Hill again. This time hit behind the line. He struggles up to the line of scrimmage. Initial hit was Tommy Sims, who, by the way, number 16 for Tennessee, has seven tackles already in this game out of the safety position. That time, the linebackers for Tennessee both did an excellent job of stringing the play up, out and 
preventing the running back from getting that north-south lane early. Gave the defensive backs him a chance to get up in the play. Hill has four carries for 29 yards. He's the leading rusher for Alabama so far. It's all been in this drive. Second down 10. 45 for Tennessee. Shula looking for Turner incomplete. Turner out of the backfield had a little bit of running room close to the first down but Shula just didn't have it right on his hands that time and the one handed attempt just didn't convert for Craig Turner. A good receiver uh, coming out of the backfield he had seven catches coming into this game. Ray Perkins talking to George Hen Henshaw the offensive coordinator up in the booth. That time they picked a play pass. Tennessee's defense got good depth took away the intermediate routes Turner was open and uh, I'm sure Ray is going to ask him why he didn't use his left hand with his right hand and that attempted reception third down 10 the tide drive is stalled momentarily at the 45 yard line of Tennessee Shula needs 10 here he's going for a lot more he has Richardson wide open at the 10 to the one foot line Greg Richardson Dublin Bell again. Richardson, just as Mike Shula let go of the football, Richardson was being bumped. There was a defensive back that ran right through Richardson on over to help Bell. I don't know if there was a mistake in the secondary, whether Kramer was expecting help to the inside. Looked like he was playing it that way. Great catch by Greg Richardson. Eight minutes to go, second quarter. Tennessee leads 7 0. Alabama, fullback, Turner, touchdown, tied. here Alabama fires off the ball Turner up in the air over the plane of the end zone touchdown air Turner for Alabama they pull to within one of Tennessee 7 6 with eight minutes and one second remaining of course the key play that 44 yard pass reception to Greg Richardson Van Tippen for the point after well Alabama sure did counter it's like two heavyweights slugging it out here point after is good they just jabbed and bobbed and weaved in the first round. We come to the second round or second quarter here, and all of a sudden they're throwing haymakers. Two 80-yard drives, and we have a tie game at Legion Field in Birmingham. This is Turner Network Television. Not so very long ago, the average four-cylinder engine looked something like this. But these days, four-cylinder engines look a little more like this. That's why we develop new Valvoline Four Guard Motor Oil, specially formulated to protect today's harder-working, more complex four-cylinder engines. And it won't break down, even after 7,500 miles. Times have definitely changed. So maybe it's time to change your oil to new Valvoline Four Guard. Ace Best Buys. I wonder who he is today. Good evening. Hi. Protect your home with the Family Guard smoke detector. The $2 rebate means it costs just $4.88. Hello, Danny. Hello. Your actual cost for this firefighter is just $4.88 with the exclusive Ace $5 rebate coupon. The Ames Green Sweeper Lawn Rake. And uh, green is nice. <laughs> and at $3.66, a nicely priced October Best Buy. That's the why it is. Ace says the price with the helpful hardware man. Yay! So we have a tie score 7 7 Alabama took it 80 yards in eight plays in three minutes 11 seconds to tie it up with that Turner one yard run it wasn't a run it was a dive but the key play was to that man 17 Greg Richardson a 44 yard pass reception from the hand the left hand of Mike Shula who's four out of eight for 66 yards now and we've got ourselves a good one here in Birmingham today critical game for both teams but particularly so for Tennessee as the Volunteers already have one loss in the SEC losing last week 17 10 to Florida. Here's Pete Panuska at the three. To the 22 or 23 yard line. Last year Tim McGee was the hero of the game when Tennessee came from behind. We talked to him about that and about Tennessee prior to the game. 
they were playing the two-deep zone, and they had an end walked out on me, and we seen a little open area, and, and we needed some big plays to get back in the game because we were down by a lot of points, and fortunately, Tony spotted me right on the sideline, and I was wide open, and things just clicked right there. That was the touchdown that led the way to the comeback. Johnny Jones scored the winning touchdown for Tennessee on a come from behind in Knoxville last year. Tennessee on a three-game winning streak, tied 7-7 here on the first down. Robinson throws as he's hit. That's Clink Scales. He may be gone out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Ricky Thomas dragged him out of bounds. Clink Scales couldn't get it into high gear. He got it in first and second, but he had a little trouble with third, and that's when he was hauled out of bounds. And uh, he looks like he pulled up lame. Quick screen out here to the wide receiver. Timmy McGee helping Wall off. You're going to see Dave Douglas, number 78, and number 76, Harry Galbraith out in front. Clink scale slows down, trying to let the lineman get out in front of him and also try to get to the sideline. He limped off the field. First down, 10 Tennessee at the 45-yard line of Alabama. Here's Keith Davis picking his way. Excellent run by the freshman, Ricky Thomas, with the tackle. There wasn't much there for number 28, but he picked his way through. There's Clink Scales. He looked like he pulled up with a cramp or something when he ran out of bounds. Here comes Keith, Keith Davis limping off the field. Very fine, uh, a run that you'd expect from an older running back. Just showed a lot of patience. Most players, as soon as they get to that hole, they take off. And he was just very patient, waiting for that guard to get up in front of him and follow him along. His clink scale look at his ankle. The left ankle. First down 10, Tennessee at the 31-yard line of Alabama. They give it to Charles Wilson. He dives inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. Charles Wilson is a sophomore from Pritchard who's been alternating at that tailback position for Davis. But Keith Davis, starting his first game today, limped off to the sideline. They're looking at him. We'll get a report has been really the key runner for Tennessee 68 yards and 10 carries as he went off and there's Davis 28 they're looking at him looks to be okay just as a casual observer on the sideline Wilson remains in it back second down six volunteers at the 27 of Alabama Alabama in that three four they hand to the fullback William Howard who is about three or four yards short of the first down. He needs to go to the 21. He got two or three. Another Tennessee player is down, down here about the 24-yard line. And now a penalty marker is also down. A late flag was thrown substantially after the play. We have 6.27 remaining in the second quarter. It's Alabama 7, Tennessee 7. Tennessee with an 80-yard scoring drive. Alabama came right back with an 80-yard scoring drive. Both happened here in the second quarter. Since then, three Tennessee players have been shaken up. Number The player laying down there is 27, Eric Swanson, the other receiver. Swanson, McGee, and Clink Scales are the three wideouts that Tennessee depends on, and now two of them have been hurt in the last three plays. For a wide receiver, Swanson is extremely aggressive. You know, there's some folks say that wide receivers don't have, you know, much courage. They, that some of them are still in the land of Oz looking for their heart. <laughs> but uh, Swanson leads this football team in intimidating blocks. So he might have been in there throwing himself around and jammed his neck or something. He looks okay. He's up walking off, as you can see, under his own power. He's 5'11", 185, a senior from San Bernardino, California. They're calling Tennessee wide receiver U. They've sent so many players to the pro ranks at University of Tennessee. Johnny Majors has coached them all over the place, but you know a bunch of them. Willie Galt playing for the Bears, Stanley Morgan with the Patriots, Clyde Duncan with the Cardinals, Anthony Hancock, Mike Miller, Daryl Wilson. The list goes on and on. Third down four. And contact at the line on a quarterback draw. Robinson dives for the first down. By the way, there was a penalty marker down there, we said, and the official picked it up So prior to that play, so there was no call on the play. There was contact before the snap. Robinson got enough yardage for the first down. What will happen in that situation, Bob, as the official explains the offsides call? They're calling procedure against Tennessee. was third and four they'll tag five on and make a third and nine let's just watch it again it Robinson jumps Alabama and off in the center will snap the ball when a defender penetrates the neutral zone offense still third down and uh, 
unless the official saw something we didn't see we'll have to agree with Johnny Majors on that one not very happy about the call Tennessee now goes from a third and four and what would have been a first down to a third down nine they move the ball back to the 30 yard line 603 to go second quarter tied at seven. Robinson looked right throws left incomplete he was trying to find Wesley Pryor number 23 who's in there in place of the injured Swanson and the injured clean scales by the way we understand that Tennessee doesn't convert we understand that clean scales has injured his left angle but will probably play again according to the report from the sideline so Tennessee has it fourth down nine at the 30 and they send in Carlos Reves for a 47 yard field goal attempt we're going to give Britt Cooper a good credit for doing a good job of coverage on that last play forcing this field goal plenty of leg on that one it's wide to the left side and the game remains tied so the youngster Carlos Reves misses wide to the left side and it's tied at 7-7 for all of our stations along the line we will now make up commercial position number six the essence of bobsledding the new sled feels like gliding on silk the essence of shaving. This is new Atra Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The Plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Atra Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. Unmistakably hot. Unmistakably cool. Unmistakably sharp. Unmistakably smooth, unmistakably right, down to the last detail. Tonight is unmistakably Stick and Dale. Tennessee and Alabama remain tied 7 7. Reves missed a 47 yarder. That's the first time he's missed inside the 49 yard line all year long and Mike Shula comes in here four out of eight for 66 yards Johnny Majors wishing maybe brother Fuad was still kicking for Tennessee instead of Miami right now Tennessee gets about two or three yards off the right side not much more Murray Hill the ball carrier both the, these teams have a dolphin connection of course Fuad with the Dolphins and uh, Alabama has been good to the Dolphins as you see Ray Perkins talking to Cornelius Bennett, Tony Nathan, Bob Baumhauer, Don McBeal, Dwight Stevenson. All have made major contributions to the Dolphins' success. Alabama, second down eight at the 32-yard line of the tie. 5-16 to go, first half. Shula rifles it in, incomplete, intended for Clay Whitehurst, the sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee. Couldn't hold on to it. There's the Tennessee offensive unit on the sideline. Can't see who that is talking to him, Bob. I don't know if that's Phil Fulmer down there. Or, no, it's Cutcliffe. Dave Cutcliffe. Trying to get some things squared away. Third down eight, Alabama, from the 32. This is that pro set formation. Split backs, wide receivers out wide to the left and right side, and one tight end. Shula has a man wide open. Whitehurst, nice grab, first down to the 48 yard line Clay Whitehurst catches it this time we're going to see the defensive secondary for Tennessee look at, look at them move right before the snap they're still not into it yet they move into a double zone five short zones two deep zones the man that makes a mistake is on the left hand side of your screen he sucks up on the short ball permitting Shula to hit Whitehurst in behind him for the first down Alabama out here to good field position now to their own 48 and Shula's going to wing it again. It's picked off number 22 with the ball is Charlie Davis. Down at the 39 yard line. The junior.
Jr. from New Paltz, New York, picks off Shula after the ball was tipped and returned at 12 yards. I believe it was tipped by Terry Brown, and he was looking for Thornton Chandler, the tight end number 81, as we take a look at it again. Big turnover. We watch the Ron Zooks, uh, Tennessee secondary again, tries to throw that zone pattern to Chandler. This time he's a little late on it. He has been successful. We saw him against Vanderbilt, against Penn State, but successful getting the ball to Chandler. This time the ball is a little late. A risky throw, tip, interception, Charlie Davis. First down, 10 volunteers from their own 39 yard line. Robinson calling play at the line, repositioning his backs, and he hands off to the fullback. About three yards for Charles Wilson. Actually, the tailback playing out of a split back position might mention that that's only the second interception of the year for Mike Shula and only the fourth turnover for Alabama as their goal this year was to play mistake free football and have done it most of the time. Second down seven from the 42 for the balls now. Three wideouts in there for Tennessee. They give for the up man of the eye. That was Charles Wilson, who's playing the fullback position. You see Davis, the man with the interception on the sideline, talking to the defensive coaches. So we have Keith Davis in at tailback, and Charles Wilson was in at the fullback position. He now goes out, and William Howard comes in at fullback. And Wilson, playing with a sore shoulder, can play both positions. Third down two from the 47 Tennessee. Here's Keith Davis. Played his blocks well. And he drives near the 40-yard line of Alabama, tackled by 95, Kurt Jarvis. Alabama player is down about midfield. So Alabama was driving, and until that interception, Tennessee looked like they were going to have some problems. But look at the run by the freshman. They trap away from Cornelius Bennett. And uh, as Tony Williams comes back to cut him off, they did a nice job of trapping John Hand on that play. Davis, again, a patient runner, displaying a lot of discipline waited for the hole to open then took it back up inside that's Wayne Davis on the ground he's the left inside linebacker for Alabama and a real stalwart defensively this front seven of Alabama the four linebackers and the three down linemen about as good as any football team in the country but they can ill afford to go too deeply as can any team they need to have Davis in there he had three tackles up until right now you see his right knee with that deadening agent being sprayed on it Tim I've often wondered just how much that deadens the pain. You've no doubt had that sprayed on your bones a time or two. And they couldn't afford that in the NFL. We didn't use that stuff. <laughs> they just <laughs> get they, up. <laughs> they just patted it and said, "Chin up, it'll be okay." Is that it? Yeah, I think it mostly it's a skin thing, though. It just deadens the skin. I understand that uh, Don Shula taped an aspirin on a lot of the injuries and sent you back in there. <laughs> Perk <laughs> obviously concerned about Wayne Davis, a leading tackler for this Alabama defense. He had a great game against Texas A&M, 24 tackles. Well, Tim, hate to see that. Oh, I hope he'll be all right. But but you didn't respond. Uh, did Don, in fact, tape an aspirin to any of your injuries? I don't think he went that far. <laughs> no radical medication. Most, huh? Yeah, most of his cures were mostly verbal. Oh, this uh, this looks very serious, as you can very easily see, for a significant defensive player, Wayne Davis, the inside linebacker. Watch this again. Watch Wayne left. Davis, number 58, top left of your screen. Sowell cuts down to the outside. Davis waits, reads, guard going away. He gets caught up. Uh, it looked like the center roll blocked him, and he got hit from the other side uh, at, the si at the same time. Well, significant uh, injury for Alabama. We'll report on the severity of that injury as soon as we find out from the sideline. Meantime, let's find out who came in to replace him there at that linebacker position. It's Lydell Mitchell, number 15, a sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama. We'll go in there. First and ten, Tennessee at the 41-yard line of Alabama. We're tied at seven. Second quarter, Robinson in trouble. Screens it right side to Charles Wilson, who gets the first down to the 29-yard line. Actually, that was not a screen, but he, um, let's call it a safety valve to Charles Wilson on the right side. Bennett with good pressure. Let's watch uh, Bennett and his role. Reed's head up. Waiting for a screen draw, not there. Hats up, all the way across the field. Here's Cornelius Bennett making the stop. 
He, a tremendous athlete, huh, Bob? Absolutely. You know, Ray Perkins has said he believes he's as good at this stage of his career as Lawrence Taylor was. And Perkins coach Taylor with the Giants. First down 10 at the 29, Tennessee. Here's Keith Davis again. Not much this time, a yard if that, to about the 28-yard line. Joe Godwin, the linebacker for Alabama, wears number 90, made the tackle. We're tied at 7, 3-10 to go first half. We thought this might be a defensive struggle. Uh, even though both teams have potent offenses and Tennessee's can really explode on you. Ray encouraging his defense. You know, Tennessee's drive was an 80 yard drive, took almost six minutes. And if you're going to score on this defense, that's how you're going to have to do it. Johnny Majors and Walt Harris have to be patient in their play, select, play selection and just take what Alabama gives you. Second down nine from the 29. Tennessee started this drive at their 39 yard line. Robinson. Incomplete. He was looking for number 23, Wesley Pryor, sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. Pryor came off a knee injury in the spring and hasn't played very much this year, but Klingscales hurt his ankle. Swanson was shaken up earlier. And we're down to Vince Carter, Wesley Pryor, and Tim McGee most of the time here on this drive. Last year, McGee had a great year, 54 catches, Tennessee record, and there was really no one to draw the attention away from him. The man's got remarkable ability, tremendous quickness off the cut. Third down nine, Tennessee at the 29 of Alabama. Four-man rush, they hand off on the draw. This is Keith Davis. Close to the first down, but he doesn't get there. Unless he fell forward for enough, I don't believe he did. He has to get to the 19-yard line. Good run by the youngster, though, who's approaching the 100-yard mark. That's his 13th carry. They're going to spot it at about the 21. He's far short of the first down. And Davis has 88 yards and 13 carries. So Tennessee, I think they're going to go for it on fourth down again. Is that accurate? I believe the kicker's on the field, Bob. Yes, <laughs> you know, he, he is. Went, they he, are not. He went once. <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's no sense in testing fate too many times. This will be... They're going to spot it at the 28. A 38-yard field goal attempt. Reves is perfect at that distance so far this year. He missed a 47-yarder earlier today. Hit this one well. And Reves gets this one on the board. So Tennessee takes the lead. 10-7 with a 38-yard field goal from Carlos Reves with 1.41 remaining in the first half. And Tennessee with a narrow lead. Seventy five thousand eight hundred eight at Legion Field in Birmingham for one of the premier football rivalries in the nation. And it's been all it's been billed to be today. Tennessee with one SEC loss. Alabama with none. Critical. A very critical game for both teams, particularly Tennessee. Most people feel that two losses in the SEC will eliminate you from a chance to win the championship. There's Tony Robinson from Leon High School in Tallahassee Florida and Tim what a great quarterback production they've had Jordan and Woodham of course played at Florida State and another player here Moses Collins now redshirt quarterback with the volunteers right Gene Cox does a great job down there at Tallahassee Leon and the funny thing about Robinson is nobody was really hot on him when he was a senior in high school had great production good statistics but he was just kind of tall and skinny and wasn't very assertive they wondered if he could be a leader <laughs> And even for his first two years in Tennessee, playing behind Alan Cockrell, he didn't really have a chance to blossom, but he's sure in full bloom now. Bobby Humphrey at the goal line. Gets some blocking. Tripped up at about the 23-yard line. That started looking dangerous for Alabama. But they tripped up Bobby Humphrey, and they will set up offense there, trailing Tennessee 10-7. So Mike Shula comes in now, and young Mike Shula is five out of 11 for 82 yards and one interception, his second of the year, that stopped the preceding drive. Tennessee took it at the 39 and drove down for the field goal. They've been fairly effective in two-minute drills this year against Georgia, against Penn State. Let's see what happens here, Bob. 134 remaining in the first half. That shovel pass to Craig Turner. He's up about eight yards up the middle. That was a kind of a floater on that shovel pass. A lot of people. We saw a defensive lineman intercept one of those earlier in the year. So it can happen. You have to be a little careful with it. Eight yards on the play. Lower left-hand corner of your screen. You see the time remaining in the first half down near a minute. 
for the first down goes the Crimson Tide. That was Bobby Humphrey carrying the ball. Beautiful Birmingham. Welcome to the beautiful sunny south. Actually, it's clouding up a little bit. Beautiful day to start this game. It was 78 degrees at kickoff. And now the cloud cover has rolled in. The breeze has picked up, and it's a very pleasant afternoon. They say on the sign here at Legion Field across from the press box, Birmingham, football capital of the south. And when you're here for this game, you believe it. First and 10, Shula from the 35-yard line. Bobby Humphrey incomplete at the 40. Excellent coverage. Number one, Andre Kramer was all over. Bobby Humphrey legally, according to the officials. Tied fans with a little bit of a boo. Always a little, always a little dangerous there when you stick those hands up in the receiver's face. That can be called. Ty doing a good job of protecting Shula. You got to, you have to try to get your head and sh head and shoulders around on this play. You got to try to react to the ball. You can't just be face masking the man. If that's what they rule, judge it as that's pass interference. Second down, ten from the 35-yard line. 36 seconds remaining in the half. Tennessee leading by ten. Draw play. Bobby Humphrey gets a good block. Drives out here to the 43-yard line. Needs to go to the 45 for the first down. Clock counting. 27 and stopping there. And Alabama has chosen to call timeout. Alabama will now have one timeout remaining, trailing 10-7. At halftime, great marching bands from Alabama and Tennessee. You don't want to miss that. Of course, we'll update you on college football from our studios in Atlanta with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins, and we'll have highlights from the first half. A minute is an eternity in college football. Of course, in professional football, you don't have, this clock doesn't stop when you get a first down. In college football, in professional football, as soon as they set the sticks, you go. In college football, you first down in the last two minutes, the uh, clock stops. And you combine that with your two, three timeouts, you just got a long time to move it down the field. Again, Perk on the phone with uh, uh, George Henshaw, offensive coordinator who worked uh, many years with Bobby Bowden. Started as a, uh, George Henshaw did, started as a graduate assistant with, with Bobby Bowden up in West Virginia, then came to Florida State. Youngster in the center of your screen, number 13, is the sophomore quarterback, David Smith, who's the third team quarterback from Gadsden, Alabama. When you see the faces of these players, you know sometimes because college football has become such a tremendously entertaining national sport, you forget that these are youngsters. <laughs> Seeing the face of David Smith, he's everybody's next door kid. Uh, and these are 18, 19, 20 year old young men playing college football. Sometimes we forget about that. Mike Shula will go into the huddle with a couple of plays. And, uh, he'll try to get them back on the ball as fast as he can if they don't make a first down on, in this particular effort. Third and two from the 43. Let's see what Mike the Mind does here. He very intelligently gives it to his excellent running back Bobby Humphrey who gets the first down. Clock down to 22 and as Tim reminded you the clock stops while they move the chains. Now Tennessee spreading that defense deeply here. They lead 10-7. 19, 18, 17. Clock counting in the first half. Screen to Turner. Nice grab. Doesn't have much running room. Does he get out of bounds? No, the clock continues to run. 7-6. Alabama does have one timeout left if they choose to call it, and they do. With five seconds remaining in the half, they spot the ball at the 48-yard line of Tennessee. So there will be time for one desperation kind of play for Alabama here as they've used all of their timeouts now. Alabama drove down to this area on their previous possession and Mike Shula threw one of his rare interceptions. It was picked off by Charlie Davis of Tennessee. I'm sure Perkins is dis disturbed about uh, the time that that play took to run. I think he was waiting for the official to either signal inbounds or out of bounds and uh, the signal was not forthcoming his valuable seconds ticked off the clock Johnny Majors has to be happy with his team's performance especially defensively they've come on strong defensively anybody that can limit Florida to 17 points has got to be playing good defense and they've overcome some injuries and uh, just have made tremendous progress in the fourth quarter of their first three games they gave up 51 points in the fourth quarter of those three football games and last week shut out Florida in the fourth quarter the rambling, gambling defense of Tennessee. They uh, were gambling 
I think, on that touchdown that tied the game in their opener with uh, UCLA. You live by it, you die by it. Right. They haven't blitzed much today, though. What about here? Possibly? I don't think so. <laughs> Second down five from the 48. And they're not. Shula has plenty of time. And he's going all the way to the end zone for Humphrey. Nothing there incomplete. And the clock goes down to double zeros. No penalty markers down. But the first half comes to a close with Tennessee leading Alabama. 10-7 from Legion Field in Birmingham. A lot of halftime activities coming your way. Stay with us. BMW 735i is one of those rare luxury sedans engineered by driving enthusiasts. While other luxury sedans announce to the world you've arrived, the new BMW 735i offers you the considerable advantage of arriving a bit sooner. For a test drive, contact your local BMW dealer. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Not so very long ago, the average four-cylinder engine looked something like this. But these days, four-cylinder engines look a little more like this. That's why we developed new Valvoline 4-Guard motor oil, specially formulated to protect today's harder-working, more complex four-cylinder engines. And it won't break down, even after 7,500 miles. Times have definitely changed. So maybe it's time to change your oil to new Valvoline 4-Guard. Delta gets you there. To Los Angeles. Boston. Chicago. And New York. Also serviced all of Florida's major resorts. Delta also gets you to Europe. Hawaii. And the islands. In all, Delta serves more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. There's no greater spectacle in college football than Tennessee and Alabama, whether at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville or Legion Field here in Birmingham. And today, both bands will be performing. You'd think it would be a bowl game with all the activity around here. This is the University of Tennessee Pride of the Southland Band. Director is Dr. W.J. Julian. Drum major is Ed Nichols. This halftime show, they call it great country music.
Tennessee band playing on the road again and a salute to country music at halftime at Legion Field in Birmingham. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. We'll be back to join Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins in our studios in Atlanta for college football updates right after this. Give me a dead lion, give me a goal. Give me a challenge, cause I'm on a roll. Give me savvy, give me cool. Give me savvy, give me cool. Give me a car that breaks all the rules. Somerset, come on, set me free. Yeah. Somerset, give me the look, give me the feel. Give me the magic, give me the wheel. Somerset, oh, wouldn't you rather have a Somerset? Oh, wouldn't you really? Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste. Because this Bud's for you. This electronic timer will show how fast you can relieve sore throat pain. My sore throat feels very red and, and hot. Will you try chloroseptic? Sure. Now watch the timer. Mm. Oh, that's nice. That works really good. With doctor-recommended chloroseptic, relief is just seconds away. Hi, Pat Summerall. I'm no mechanical expert, but I work with professional quality master mechanic tools from True Value Hardware Stores. For quick home repairs, get a master mechanic electric glue gun. This top quality dual rivet gun with rivets or a heavy duty staple gun. This miter box sets common angles accurately and store loads of tools in this hip roof toolbox. You can do a lot with master mechanic tools exclusively from participating True Value Hardware Stores and home centers. Super Football Saturday continues in studio with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. Well, we expected a close ball game. We should certainly have one. 10 to 7 now, Tennessee on top of just a field goal. Anything Did surprise you? Yes, the, the beauty of the Tennessee cheerleaders has. They, year after that year, they you? do have the best looking cheerleaders <laughs> any team in the country. No, the game's going pretty much like I thought. I think you're going to see a three point game. Elsewhere across the country, a big game out in the Big Ten today. Michigan taking on Iowa, probably for number one. That will be getting underway shortly. Miami of Florida against the Oklahoma Sooners. That also should be interesting. Miami's offense against Oklahoma's defense. Jim Coates ran the opening kickoff 78 yards to set up a touchdown for Penn State. 7-0 rolling in the second quarter. Texas, Arkansas later this afternoon. For Nebraska, Dale Klein has kicked five field goals. The fourth set a school record. The fifth a Big Eight record. Auburn, Georgia Tech not yet underway. Brigham Young with a 24-game winning streak in its own conference, playing at New Mexico. Air Force 6-0, taking on Colorado State. Oh, at Ohio State, Purdue trying to get back in the game. Jim Everett throws a short pass to Rodney Carter. Watch the cuts here, and the other one's better. He takes it in and there's a gap at 17-17. Purdue's Jonathan Briggs later adds a 24-yard, 22-yard field goal, excuse me, and it's 17-10, Ohio State over Purdue at halftime. Florida State trying to come back from that loss to Auburn a week ago. Texas A&M, Baylor later tonight. Tennessee, of course, our game on top, 10-7 at the half. Georgia, you'll be seeing the Bulldogs next week playing at Vanderbilt. No score in the first. UCLA, Washington, also a later start. Kentucky, LSU, you'll see Kentucky next week. That's at 7.45. Notre Dame leading Army 14-7. Alan Pickett has become Notre Dame's all-time leading rusher. However, Army was able to get on the board just before the half. Torrey Crawford of the option play to William Lampley. It is 14-7, but as we mentioned, Pinkett has broken Vegas Ferguson's career rushing mark. San Jose State, Arizona is later tonight. For the Florida Gators, Neil Anderson scored his 29th touchdown. That breaks the Gator record held by Wes Chandler. North Carolina State scored just before the half on a 14-yard pass from Eric Craver to Haywood Jeffries. Minnesota is leading Indiana 13 to nothing. Ricky Foggy pitches it to Valdez Baylor. He goes in for the touchdown. And Minnesota on top right now, 13 to nothing. 
Michigan State leads Illinois 17 to 14. Illinois has just scored a touchdown. And Pittsburgh, listen to this. The defense has held Rutgers to minus 18 yards rushing in the first half. Virginia Tech and Virginia is now 10 to nothing at the half. Wake Forest trailing Maryland by just a field goal, 6-3. Texas Tech on top of Rice, 12 to three. Clemson on top of Duke, 14 to nothing. John Mahalik has a touchdown for Boston College. It is now 6-3, and Brown also leads Cornell, three to nothing. Coming up at post game, you have a special look at the Heisman candidates. Yes, sir, and we'll also want to drop in right now that Bowling Green's playing today, and they're undefeated. And they're playing uh, Central Michigan, and That's they're also undefeated. That's a big game. For the MAC title, probably. You got it. We'll be back with Tennessee, Alabama, the second half after a visit to both schools. Dr. Bill Bass, a University of Tennessee forensic anthropologist, helps police identify victims of murders and accidental deaths. As the body decays in the decay process, you reach a stage at which a forensic pathologist has no tissue in which to do an autopsy on, because ultimately you would end up with only the skeleton. Or if it goes, I mean, in a, in a fire situation where all the tissue is burned and you have nothing but fragmentary skeletal material, that's when the forensic anthropologist steps in. So essentially in the chain of human identification, I am the last man to be called in. Bass shares his field work and research with his students. I, I think if you're going to be a good teacher, you need to do research, certainly in your chosen field, because the research is what advances the field that you're in. The University of Tennessee's Bill Bass, the nation's college professor of the year. I'd gone as far as I could on my own. I needed support, that extra push. Take it again. No, you have to work harder. I don't know how this dream began. I don't know where it'll Good end. Night. But right here, right now, I'm getting the chance to make it happen. The University of Alabama, a commitment to quality, a commitment to you. Seventy-five thousand eight hundred eight football fans at Legion Field in Birmingham, Tennessee, leading Alabama 10-7 at halftime. This is the University of Alabama Million Dollar Marching Band. The band director, Dr. Catherine Scott Calhoun. The drum majors are Tom Berkeley, David Gill, and Tracy Tucker. And they call this Sentimental Journey.
You're watching the University of Alabama Million Dollar Band. We'll return in just a moment when Tim Foley will talk to Don Shula, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. The enemy. Rain. A mere one-eighth inch can float your car off the road. Thus the rationale for Vector. Goodyear's unique all-season radio. So advanced, its crisscross tread actually pumps away water to help more tire and your car stay on the road. The Goodyear Vector. It simply performs like no other tire in the world. Tonight, a classic Western tribute in memory of one of the greats of stage and screen, Neil Brenner. The odds are too high. We'll lower the odds. Steve McQueen, Robert Vaughn, James Coburn, and the unforgettable Yul Brenner. The Magnificent Seven, 8 Eastern on the Superstation, tonight. Hi, I'm Terry Labonte. Watch me race for the Tucker flag, the Piedmont Airlines Chevrolet. It's live on Superstation WTBS. At 12.35 p.m. Eastern, Sunday. You are watching the home of the 1986 Goodwill Games. Superstation WTBS. Excitement. Well, Tim Foley played 10 years for the Dolphins, and here's something he's repeating that he did many times, and that's talking to Don Shula at halftime. On the telephone this time, here's Tim Foley. Yeah, I usually listen to Coach Shula. I didn't talk much. <laughs> Isn't that right, Coach? Hey, let me ask you, is, is it harder watching your Dolphins play, or is it, uh, is it more tedious watching your own son perform? Highly different. I'm a father, and I'm jumping up and down, and I'm anxious, and um, when I'm coaching, I get into the game and think about strategy. Don, just pull for Mike. Who, who keeps you calm? Now, Dorothy's not there, huh? Madonna's with me, and she's uh, keeping me calm, although every once in a while she gets excited and jumps up and down. Do you and Mike talk during the week at all about the upcom upcoming opponents? I talk, we talk about once a week, and he brings me up to date as to uh, how they're doing and what he thinks uh, about the game plan and how excited he is. And uh, so we, it's mostly just general talk, and I try to uh, give him the confidence and uh, tell him to go after it. Well, I know you've got to be proud of him. When you were watching him play at Columbus, did, uh, did you ever feel that he had the ability to, to become the type of quarterback that could lead the nation in passing efficiency? Well, that's, that's a little hard to predict something like that, but I knew Mike uh, was an excellent quarterback and enjoyed playing quarterback and uh, enjoyed the challenges. And, um, and a great drive here in the uh, second quarter where they came right back and tied the game up after Tennessee went ahead 7-0. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Tennessee is just so explosive. But uh, he had the one bad play, the interception, where he tried to fit the ball in there, and they made a good play on it. Here's the long pass that uh, I got pretty excited about here. Well, he's played well all year long for him. And uh, I know the thing that you're probably most proud of is that, you know, he's a great quarterback playing well, but they love him here as a person. He's just been a great leader for him and the type of, type of guy that just reflects so well on on you and Dorothy and everything that he's been associated with. Seems like they can't ever get him to a meeting at, at uh, noon because he's always at mass. Where do you get that from, you think? Well, we, you know, we think that's pretty important, but I'm very proud of him, Tim, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to the second half. I hope they can pull it out. Well, thank you very much for your help. I appreciate your cooperation. Now, relax, take it easy, and just enjoy this. Bob? Thank you, Tim Foley and Don Shula. We appreciate him talking with us about viewing his son in the first half of this game, Tennessee leading 10-7. We'll be back with the opening kickoff of the second half in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Bigger engines were easy on oil. But today's smaller, higher revving engines are tougher. They can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castrol. Tests show Castrol suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castrol. Because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. Brighten your colors, sharpen your sound. With high-tech components designed to astound. Fine-tune your mind with Emerson. Amazing new features, the ultimate prize. Step into the future, we'll open your eyes. Fine-tune your mind. Fearless ones who 
jump and fly from coast to coast onto the plains. The super station's got your game. Some will win and some will cry. We won't forget the ones who try. The super station paves the way for superstars. WTBS, Great American Sports. Well, Tennessee leads 10-7. You can see it's been an even Stephen ball game. Keith Davis, the freshman running back for Tennessee, individually has outrushed the entire Crimson Tide running game. Davis has 88 yards of the 110 for Tennessee. Passing yardage about equal. Both teams have turned the ball over once. Tennessee unusually has possessed the ball uh, almost uh, about four and a half minutes longer than Alabama. Alabama wanted to play ball control. That's something that I'm sure that they would like to do better. And I almost lost my train of thought there as I saw my vision in the screen. It's Ken Fouts. I was complaining that Tim got all the uh, halftime on camera. So thank you very much. My mother will thank you and so on and so forth. And we're ready now to show you pictures of what you really want to see, which are these players from Tennessee and Alabama. What a great first half. 10-7 Tennessee. And Tim, your comments on Cornelius Bennett. Do you feel he looked like he was playing up to his speed? Well, when you haven't played for three games, it certainly has got to hurt your product Activity. But he's getting his feet on the ground, and they, they've got a nice plan for him to run away from him. Here comes Humphrey. Good kickoff return to the 33-yard line. Bobby Humphrey knocked out of bounds by number nine, Vince Carter. There you see what Alabama did in the first half. One 80-yard drive. Other than that, they had to punt it through that one interception, and, of course, the half ended. Tennessee leading 10-7, and there's the Alabama offensive unit. Craig Turner, Bobby Humphrey in the backfield. Mike Shula, the quarterback. Whitehurst, Chandler, Bell, the wide receivers. And here comes young Mike Shula. 7 out of 15 for 95 yards in the first half. Now Murray Hill in at the halfback position for Alabama. He gets the ball on a misdirection hit in the backfield. Nice penetration coming right up the middle by 65. Robbie Scott, 275-pounder from Decatur, Tennessee. They tried one of their Alan Tolles tricks with Robbie Scott. Tolles, a fullback, they moved him to linebacker, became a, an excellent player for him for a couple of years at linebacker. They tried Robbie Scott at center. That one didn't work out quite as well as they thought. Then after some injuries, they moved him back to defense. He played well. Second down 12, Alabama at the 31-yard line. Sunshine peeking through now, as you can see. Mix up in the backfield, Murray Hill with the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. As Mike Shula faded back, he ran smack dab into his freshman running back, and Darren Miller and Brian Kimbrough made the stop. Murray Light. We're going to watch Dale Jones here. He's coming this time, working against Dave Johnson. Hoss Johnson comes back, drags to the ball, makes the play. He's a big playmaker for Tennessee, has been ever since he's a freshman, and really the, the bell cow of that particular defense. Although Ziegler is really playing well on the inside. Three wideouts in there for Alabama. And it's Murray Hill coming way out wide to the right side. Bell goes in motion on the third and ten. Unusual pattern. And it's incomplete. It would have been about a nine-yard completion. A penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage. Intended for Big Thornton Chandler, the Alabama tight end, who is the classic prototype, pro-type end. Chandler, 6'6", 240. There you see the officials discussing the infraction and the signal. Illegal motion. Alabama. Well, there is a lot of motion, that was for sure. You saw Murray Hill, it was declined on the incompletion. Murray Hill was splitting way out to the right side. And uh, that could have been some of it. And did they call offside against Tennessee Off also? Offside against penalties. Tennessee. So they do it again. One thing that's really important for the Alabama offense is to win on first down. You know, they don't like to be in those second and long, third and long situations. They're, they're, a, they're a run first, throw second type of football team. This is third down 10, Alabama, at the 33-yard line. A little bit of confusion on this particular series. Now, here goes Hill out of the backfield again, much like last time. Maybe they just tried it again. Shula in trouble. Well, about 
three yards, but he was chased out of the pocket and tackled by Richard Cooper, the sophomore from Memphis, number 77. You see the picture of Tony Robinson. That was after the big Auburn game. They were all set. Sports Illustrated was all set to put Bo Jackson on that cover. But after the upset, it was touchdown Tony. Now a punting situation for Alabama. Chris Moore. That's a beauty. Good hang time. Kramer is going to let it bounce. Takes an Alabama bounce. Oh, what a bounce it does take to the 10-yard line. That's what they're trying to do. Alabama was trying to do in the first half and couldn't get it done. 55-yard punt. We'll be right back to Legion Field in Birmingham. You know, when I started dipping Kodiak, made my friend here real happy because it's his brand. Now it's my brand, too. It's good and moist with a special cut that packs right. And it's got a big, fresh, wintergreen flavor. But <laughs> don't take my word for it. Just ask my friend here. <laughs> he really got away with words, don't he? <laughs> The lengths people go to to listen to a Delco music system may strike you as a bit odd until you've heard it. Nothing else sounds quite like Delco because it's specifically designed to match the acoustics of your very own GM car while it's still on the drawing board. Delco Electronics delivers sound so true you'll never want to stop listening. Delco designed in sound. You'll love it too much to leave it. Third quarter action here. Ohio State leading Purdue 17 to 10 when Jim Casados hits Chris Carter in the corner of the end zone, making it 24 to, uh, excuse me, 24 to 10. Later, Purdue added another touchdown. They tied it, or get it back close, 24 to 10, and I'm sorry. Back to you, Bob. Oh, you Oilers. Some ball game. Ohio State just scoring. First down 10, Tennessee from their own 10, thanks to that 55-yard punt. They run it off right tackle for about three yards on the right side. That's freshman Keith Davis running the ball. And that's what Tennessee did in the first half. They had to punt, then they threw the interception, then the 80-yard touchdown drive, missed a field goal, and then came back after the interception by Charlie Davis off Mike Shula and got a 38-yard field goal from Carlos Reves, and thus the 10-7 score with 12.28 to go. Third quarter of play. This will be second down seven from the 13. Tennessee with three wide receivers in the game. They're going to give to Davis again, and he runs it to the middle. Nowhere. Oh, my. Hand and Jarvis, about 550 pounds of football players all over Keith Davis. You're going to watch what a quick 270 pounds looks like. Quick arm over, gets right back into the flow of the action. Pow. Davis having himself an excellent day today. This is the most he's rushed for at this point in a ball game all year long. He had 102 versus Auburn and 102 versus Wake Forest. But he didn't have this many at this point. He's got a chance to break that. Third and six, Tennessee from the 14. Robinson, plenty of time, but this is what he does so well. First down, Tennessee. We talked about it before the game, and that's something Johnny Majors said, and Walt Harris told us, uh, Tim, that that something that, that he brings to the quarterback position that most don't. Right, and he is a good runner. As we mentioned in the opening, a 39-yard run, he's got the longest run of any Tennessee back, and, and he doesn't just scramble and buy time or slide in there. He is a north-south scrambler, and he can make, I've seen film on him against Auburn, and uh, you know, he can make people miss. It's first down Tennessee from the 21. They had to start at their 10 after that Chris Moore 55 yard punt, but now off with a little breathing room just outside the corner. Pitch to Keith Davis. Gets a little hole for about three yards. Good block over there. Bruce Wilkerson made a nice block to open that hole. Bruce Wilkerson at 6'5", 260, Philadelphia, Tennessee. is I, I don't know, would you say so, Tim, the best offensive lineman for Tennessee? Oh, no question about it. He's come a long way, played some as a freshman, and uh, he just really grades out well every week. He's got everything you're looking for, the size and the feet and the intensity. Before we go any farther, I'd like to thank Don Shule again for taking the time out of his preparation for the Tampa game. Talk with us on a telephone. Second down eight from the 23. Robinson, a lot of time, screens right side to Davis. He gets the first down. 
Once again, I said screen. It really wasn't a screen. Davis was just a safety valve over there. The screen involves blockers. He had none. We're going to watch this again. Defensively, this is what you want it to look like. Get your linebackers out of there. Get some depth. Helping those intermediate patterns, take them away. Now the ball's in the air. Respond to the ball. React to the football. Now make the tackle. If he makes a tackle, it's no first down. But the Phillips misses and first down Tennessee. Davis, 94 yards running, 35 yards receiving. Having himself a heck of an afternoon. First down Tennessee out of the 33. Here comes Davis again. Not much this time. Across the 35 to about the 36-yard line, though. That's his 17th carry of the day. That is a workhorse. Speaking of 17, it reminds me of Johnny Majors back in 1956. Majors in this Alabama-Tennessee game run, ran for 117 yards on 30 carries out of that single wing. We talked to him about it yesterday. And in 1957, finished second in the Heisman, uh, vote, excuse me, Heisman Trophy voting to Paul Horning. He led his team that year to a 10-0 record, by the way, and Horning's team only won two games. A lot of controversy over that. Second down eight from the 35. Here's Tony Robinson. Gets a good block. Gets the first down. Out across the 45 to the 46. Tony Robinson with a Tennessee first down. Volunteers lead 10-7. Remember, Tennessee has one loss in the Congress. Alabama's undefeated. Fake a little action now. They take away the pitch right off the bat. A nice block there on Cornelius Bennett, it looked like, who is probably responsible for the uh, for the pitch man good block by Jeff Smith and Robinson takes it upfield nice game first and ten at the 45 yard line out of the eye play fake Robinson nice play to Charles Wilson first down Tennessee wrestled out of bounds on the far side by 56 Greg Gilbert depends on where they spot it let's see I believe it's a first down What's happening on that play action, Bob, is they're running off the two wide receivers. The one man's running straight down the field. The man in the slot is heading to the sideline, then up the field. The Alabama defender is turning his back on the football and running with the slot man, opening up that short zone. So when the ball is thrown, there's no one there to react to the ball to make the stop. As you see, they're having to measure it. Uh, it looked as though it was a Tennessee first down, but when they spotted the ball, it was moved back about a full yard from where I thought it originally went out of bounds, and it may be just an, an inch or two short of the first down. So it, nevertheless, though, it'll bring up uh, a second down in short yardage. Second down and just inches. And there's 97, Cornelius Bennett, junior from Birmingham. He, by the way, also grew up right here in this Legion Field area in Birmingham, on the west side of Birmingham. I imagine both he and Bobby Humphrey would sneak into college football games over here, right? Can you remember scaling the wall? I remember that, doing that down at Dyke Stadium in Northwestern. I always just tried to look poor and hungry and hope somebody would just invite <laughs> me in. <laughs> they never did. I guess it's because I didn't look hungry enough. Second down and inches at the 45. Robinson pump fakes and goes for everything. Looking for McGee. Touchdown! What a catch by Tim McGee. There is a penalty marker on the play. The quarterback is down. There's a penalty marker in the Tennessee backfield. They may have roughed Robinson, but they'll wave it off if that's the call. He's up and okay, and I think we've got a touchdown. I think, I think you'll see here in the end, McGee kind of, his concentration is broken by the great effort of the Alabama defensive backs. It's a curl and go. It just comes down and pops it out. Now up the field. Defensive back turn, run. Make up ground. Get your head around. He does. Good job by Freddie Robinson. Thomas there to help out. He makes the catch. I thought never, he had it. Never maintained. I don't think he maintained What's control the of the ball long enough for it What's to count, but you know I've got a defense. defensive attitude. Defensive bias. <laughs> and if you want six points, you got to hold on to the thing all the way down. But great concentration by Timmy McGee. Well, of course, you can you can argue that one forever, but it's the does the ball, is the man in the end zone in possession of the ball, and we'll just be able to. Here there he has again. it. There he has it. There he has hey, it. Oh, it looked like he was always kind of grabbing for it a little bit, never really had a solid hold on it. Nevertheless, the roughing the quarterback penalty moves it to a first down at the 30-yard line, and back comes Tennessee. No gain. That was Keith Davis. Stopped at the line of scrimmage, Ricky Thomas with the tackle. That time they ran it toward Cornelius Bennett as he came across the line of scrimmage. 
They had a wide receiver give him a little pop, which enabled that play to break outside. 7.35 to go third quarter. Tennessee leading 10-7. And a controversial call on the touchdown, no touchdown by McGee in the end zone. What would have been a great catch. It's now second down and actually a little longer than 10. We'll call it 11 yards. Robinson gets out of trouble and gets slammed to the ground by Cornelius Bennett. Bennett and Robinson have a real duel on, as you can see, Tony Robinson is holding his left shin. He was really popped by Cornelius Bennett. I'm going to watch Bennett on this replay. Coming off the ball. It's a screen pass, so Daryl Smith, number 57, is letting him go inside. They wanted to th throw a screen back to the left side, not there. So Robinson throws it away at the feet of some offensive linemen. You saw him grab his leg in pain as he went down. When you take another look at this, this force Bennett comes in and chase him. Watch the right lower leg of Tony Robinson right there when he came down on it. That's the point of the injury. He's still on the field. Here he comes. He's getting up now. See it again. And Bennett is in the flow. As far as uh, any roughness call there, he's in the... He's perfectly legal there. Robinson has to come out for one play because of the injury and senior Daryl Dickey the son of Tennessee's new athletic director Doug Dickey comes in to fill in for this one play but Robinson looks to be okay. The situation is this it will be third down 10 at the 30. I think Robinson's all right. This Alabama defense has been showing the muscle the last few plays against Tennessee. Dickey's going to throw, almost throws an interception. Ricky Thomas just dropped it. Oh, my. Talk about dodging a bullet. Oh, that'll bring up fourth down. And an opportunity for a field goal attempt by Carlos Reves. Like he called a check off. He was expecting a hitch from the wide receiver, and the, the, the receiver ran a uh, it's kind of a smash route to the inside and the communications there. This will be a 47 or 48 yard field goal if it's successful. Plenty of distance. It is good. Tennessee 13 Alabama 7. Tennessee with a missed touchdown pass from Tony Robinson to McGee when McGee juggled it going into the end zone but they get the field goal. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. You know you can do the job. All you need is a chance. Look what the Air Force Reserve can offer. Good pay and benefits. Technical training in a variety of fields. And more education with the new Reserve GI Bill and the Community College of the Air Force. All for two weeks a year and one weekend a month. Today's Air Force Reserve. A great way to serve. Richard Petty talks about his all-time driving headaches. Rockingham, 65. Now that was a goodie. Bristol, 74. That was another goodie. Daytona, 82. That was definitely a goodie. I've won over 200 races, but I've had over 700 headaches. So just take it from me. Goodies get rid of the pain fast, and that's what counts. Goodies headache powders and extra strength tablets. So Tennessee gets the 48-yard field goal by Carlos Reves, his second of the game. He missed the 47, hit a 38, hit a 48, and it's now 13 to 7, Tennessee. That was a 59-yard drive, took 5 minutes, 45 seconds. Almost had a touchdown, but McGee juggled it in the end zone. Official ruled it a non-catch, and thus Tennessee stalled and had to go for the field goal. We understand that, by the way, Joey Klinkscales is out with his ankle injury and will not be back in the game. Also, Eric Swanson was injured for Tennessee. We'll get a report on him in a few minutes. Here comes Bobby Humphrey. 
driven down at the 23 yard line by number 22 Charles Davis the man who had the interception earlier there is clink scales has an ankle injury and you see it the tape there on his calf area they told us ankle it looks like more of a calf problem he really has been a deep threat for them in their first four games and that might allow Alabama to play a little bit more two deep zone instead of saying in that three deep Alabama has Humphrey and Turner in the backfield with Shula, Richardson, Chandler, and Bell, the wide receivers, trailing 13-7, 6.57 to go, third quarter. Legion Field, Birmingham. Here comes Humphrey. Cuts against the grain to the 30-yard line and a little bit more. He was hit hard by 14, Terry Brown. Back to Atlanta for this college football update. Thank you, Bob. This is Army with the ball, a chance to tie the ball game. But watch what happens. Quarterback Torrey Crawford makes the pitch to William Lappy, and Lampley takes it into the end zone. However, they ruled that Crawford's knees were down. They had to settle for a field goal, 14-10. Oh, a tight one there. Jerry Faust holding on to only a four-point lead with his Notre Dame team over Alabama. Boy, there's some hitting here, folks. That's close to a first down. Chris White with the tackle. Bobby Humphrey getting up off the ball carry, and Humphrey's been... The workhorse here in the second half, that was his 11th carry of the day. And it is a first down, Alabama, out near the 35-yard line. So Alabama has once again bent but not broken, with the exception of the 180-yard touchdown drive that was aided by an interference call in the end zone and forced Tennessee to go for three field goals instead of touchdowns. So this will be a whole different ballgame. loose at the 33 yard line they say it remains in the possession of Alabama something that Alabama hasn't done much of all year there's Eric Swanson he was injured earlier for Tennessee the wide receiver looks to be okay but has not returned for much action Thornton Chandler falls on this watch for number 81 Tim if we taking it up inside who pops it out there was that Dale Jones nope wasn't Jones he was scrambling for the ball Keith Kelly Ziegler Knocked it out of there. That's 11 fumbles for Alabama, but they recovered all but two of them. Second down, 12. Shovel pass to Craig Turner. Boy, Tennessee's defense has really played well. It looked like it came loose, too. Right at the line of scrimmage at the 36-yard line. Tennessee is really popping. Both defenses were. Alabama was just finished with Tennessee's offense, and now the Tennessee D is doing the same thing. Once again here, it's time for a screen or a draw. They run the shovel. Turner taking it upfield. Chris White knocks it out. Number seven, who's had a remarkable season for Tennessee. Four interceptions so far this year. Just played really well. Strong safety. It popped back underneath Craig Turner after it came loose. Third and nine, Alabama. Two straight fumbles. Here they come. Shula going right down the middle. Looking for Chandler. Can't get it. He was covered by seven Chris White. Incomplete, and Alabama will have to give up possession of the ball. The poor quarterback pressure from Kelly Ziegler, but everybody was coming that time. The Tennessee fans are who you hear cheering right now. Ken Donahue, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, had really developed a reputation for liking the blitz on third and long. They haven't used it today. That's the first time they've came with a full blitz. Another good punt by Moore, not as long as his previous ones. Fair catch signal for by Kramer at the 27-yard line, but he got good hang time and no return on that ball at all. So Tennessee with pretty good field position out here to the 26-and-a-half-yard line. Tennessee leading 13-7, 4.32 to go in the third quarter. Oh, that's great. When I needed a new chainsaw, I went right to a pooling dealer. That's Poland. Feature for feature, dollar for dollar, it's hard to beat a pooling. Poland. And a pooling dealer can help you pick just the right saw for the job. Seems a saw this good deserves a dealer this good. So when you're looking for a tough, dependable chainsaw, look for a dealer that sells Poland. Poland. That's what I said, Poland. You said Poland? Ask them. Poland. America's chainsaw. To Jim Peck, who had five business lunches in three days, Republic Airlines awards the comforts of perks. I've earned them. To Denise Cresta, who had to preview 400 patterns of plaid, Republic awards the executive suite perk. I've earned it. And to Ron Barry, who had to be in three cities at the same time, Republic awards a free trip after only 20,000 miles. He's earned it. We make you feel like flying. 
something to him. Tennessee leading Alabama 13-7. Tennessee's leading receiver, Tim McGee, does not have a reception in this game. Two Tennessee receivers are out, Swanson and Klingscales with injuries. Here's Davis. Good blocking, big hole. Down at the 31-yard line, tackled by 37, Rory Turner. Gain of about five yards from Keith Davis, who's getting up near the 100-yard mark. And Tennessee leads 13 to 7, 414 to go in the third quarter. And it'll be second down. A long five, maybe six. Ronnie Zook, coached for several years with Mike Godfrey. At Murray State and then out to Kansas. Talking his defensive backs. Davis. Drives for only a yard or two to about the 32-yard line, bringing up a third down conversion. Right now, we're going back to Atlanta for another college football update. And we'll take you back to South Bend, Indiana. Notre Dame with the ball. Allen Pickett gets the call over up. And in, 21-10 now, Notre Dame up on our beam. And another Alabama player is shaken up. It's Joe Godwin, the other inside linebacker. Wayne Davis went out with an injury in the first half. We do not know the severity of the Davis injury, but now the other starting inside linebacker for Alabama is down. Several injuries in this game. Two to wide receivers for Tennessee, and now two to linebackers for Alabama. Godwin is a junior from New Brockton, Alabama. They've been playing Greg Gilbert in there at linebacker. Todd Roper a little bit at linebacker. He Roper. looks okay. Maybe Wynn knocked out, Tim. Right, yeah, Roper's, uh, Roper's in there, and uh, Wayne Davis is back on the field. And he's just full speed all the time, Joe Godwin. He's one of those guys that gets 100% squeezes every bit of potential out of his ability that he can. And he, Alabama's the only team that offered him a scholarship. They're glad they did. We're just talking about Tim McGee with no receptions. This is a passing situation. Third down five at the 32. To Panuska. Panuska out near the 40-yard line. Tennessee first down. Todd Roper with the tackle. So they're covering those Tennessee wide receivers, and Robinson's had to throw to the backs more than anybody else. He's now 8 out of 14, passing the ball for 113 yards and one interception. That time it was Sean Lee giving Timmy McGee a shove and a chuck and following him down the field, preventing him from being a primary target for Tony Robinson. Keith Davis is in at tailback. Charles Wilson at fullback for Tennessee on a first and 10 from the 39. Throwing on the run, Robinson short hops it. He had two receivers, Carter and 81 Jeff Smith down there, but just couldn't find anything. Excellent coverage by this, what we had called a suspect Alabama defensive secondary. I think that time they dodged a little bit of a bullet. The middle was wide open that time. And, uh, whether they took the play fake or what, I don't know, I'm not sure what happened, but it just opened wide. And uh, Robinson wasn't able to get him the ball. He made a great throw like that against uh, Florida last week completed toward the end of the first half that led to a field goal. Second down 10 Tennessee at the 39 yard line of the Volunteers. Tennessee leads 13 7 Robinson again going to the air again on the run. Near midfield he did not step out of bounds. They mark it at the 50 and it will be another Tennessee first down thanks to the running of that man. The quarterback pressure initially came from 78 John Hand. That was a gain of 11 yards. Here's a young man after his first two years of college football is very discouraged. He wasn't having getting an opportunity to play but stayed in there got his chance to show his stuff and has just done an excellent job over the last two years. We saw him play last year against Auburn when he was just starting to get his feet on the ground. Saw his head get taken off by another Robertson an Auburn Robinson and uh, fumbled in the end zone but has come back and just done exceptionally well this year. Another first down Tennessee over the middle incomplete. He was looking for 23 Wesley Pryor. It may have been tipped by 97 Bennett. This man, what a force in football. And he's not playing at 100%. He's off the, coming off the injury. And Bennett is not at full speed for him. But as I was talking to Paul Kennedy, the Alabama play-by-play -play voice on the radio at halftime, he said, no, he's not at full speed. But wouldn't you rather have Bennett at 90% than most anybody else at 100? And that's exactly correct. You can't really block him man-to-man. -man. You have to figure in your offensive scheme of protection for the quarterback 
assigning two people to number 97. Second down 10. Robinson continuing to go to the air here. Continuing to find nobody home. Throwing on the run. Incomplete. The reception attempt was, would have been a his heroic reception, but it goes incomplete. The Tennessee receiver is still down. And that is Vince Carter, number nine, who hit this artificial surface hard. I might mention, uh, uh, as artificial surfaces go, in my opinion, I've walked on a lot of them at various stadiums around the country, this is one of the hardest packed down there. <laughs> Tell you what, they're all <laughs> one of the hardest. I thought you might. I thought you <laughs> might have that opinion. Let's watch Bennett work against Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Wilkerson does a real fine job on him on this play. Number 68 keeps him off. Nice job. Finally gets the arm over and slides around him. Robinson's niftiness breaks the pocket perimeter and he finds someone down the field to rip it to. Pretty soon Tennessee's going to run out of wide receivers here. This is the third wide receiver to go down. Eric Swanson has a back injury, will not come back to play. Clink Scales has a lower leg injury to his left leg, will not come back to play. Pryor is down. You can see they're working on him right now. So Tennessee is left with Sam Grady, the sprinter, who frankly is not a real good receiver. It looks like Carter may be okay. Uh, Grady is left. Uh, Wesley Pryor, who's coming off an injury himself, has played a little bit. Then there's Troy Hale, who hasn't played in the game so far, but it's where they're getting getting skinny at wide receiver here. See what happens on this attempted reception. Oh, you can see very clearly what happens. That carpet just digs you up. You see Britt Cooper lands on top of him and just knocks the wind out of him. Now third down ten at the midfield strike. This game is really at a critical point right here. Tennessee leading 13-7. Pump fake left. He goes right to Davis. Needs a block. Gets it at the 50. Needs a cut. Close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. I think they'll say he's about a yard shy. Freddie Robinson with a tackle. Excellent job of running with the ball for Davis, but I believe he's going to come up short. He does come up short of the first down. That was third down 10. It's going to be about fourth down one. Tennessee's going to have to give up the ball. In comes Bob Garman, their punter. Fourth and two, really, when you take a look at it there on the sideline, more accurately. Now, this is a key punting play for the University of Tennessee. Garman's going to try to down it somewhere inside the 10. Albert Bell can really fly, the junior college transfer from Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas. Going for the corner. Getting the middle of the end zone, or almost the middle. So it'll be brought out to the 20 yard line, a 41 yard punt. Garmin not happy with that, you can be sure. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. The faces of America. America's individuals. America's strength. American General Life and Accident has known the people of America for 82 years. Working closely with America's individuals is the only way our agents know to develop an insurance program which meets your needs. We believe in America's individuals. We are American General Life and Accident Insurance Company. Brighten your colors, sharpen your sound with high-tech components designed to astound. Well, this game's getting down to it, folks. It's another classic Tennessee-Alabama matchup. Tennessee leading 13-7. Tony's back on the phone to the offensive coordinator upstairs talking about a way to solve this Alabama defense. Well, Alabama is running Bumble Humphrey, Humphrey, and the ball is loose again, and Tennessee has recovered. Alabama came into this game with three turnovers all year, and they've turned it over twice in this game. They fumbled three times on their previous possession. Dale Jones got the ball. Watch 54. They're running the stun inside. He's trying to close it down. Ziegler nails him. Who is that? Chris White. There's number seven in there. The ball pops out. Dale Jones comes up with it. Big turnover at the 28-yard line of Alabama. Tennessee leads 13-7. 
Ray Perkins trying to encourage his team. That's three times the ball has been on the ground for Alabama in the third quarter. And off to the fullback. That's 35, William Howard. He drives to about the 26-yard line. So Tennessee, there you see the turnover situation. Alabama, three fumbles, two interceptions. That's the total for the year. Now remember, coming into this game, they had one interception and two fumbles for a total of three. So they've almost matched that in this one game. Tennessee, very good at getting those takeaways when somebody gives them the opportunity. There's that aggressive volunteer defense. They talked about the fact a matter of fact, Ray Perkins was concerned about the fact that Tennessee was so aggressive defensively. Robinson with the play fake on a second down nine. It's complete. Close to the first down, out of bounds at the 17-yard line. It'll be a first down to Charles Wilson, number 32. First down, Tennessee, leading 13-7 in the final moments of the third quarter. Missouri just barely trailing Nebraska. That's in the third quarter. Real battle there at Missouri. And look at that. In the second quarter, Georgia and Vanderbilt in a close one in Nashville, 6-3. Florida was this game was nothing nothing in the second quarter and then kaboom Florida in front of southwestern Louisiana 38 nothing a real I said earlier this week I thought it was probably the biggest mismatch in the country and now looking though it may be on a first down at the 18 UT after recovering the Bobby Humphrey fumble penalty marker down in the secondary the 25 second clock may have wound down Sometimes that will happen to Robinson because of his audibles and checkoffs. Delay of game. Sometimes he, he has just one choice, an odd or an even choice. Same play to the left or to the right. Sometimes Walt Harris gives him the flexibility to change the play completely from a run to a pass or the other way around. 25 second delay. Offense. Still first down. So it'll be first and 15, and they spot it at the 22-yard line. Tennessee's been down here knocking on the door before trying to get the ball in the end zone. They've done it only one time in the second quarter on an 80-yard drive. And as I told you, that was aided by an interference call in the end zone. Other than that, they've had to settle for two field goals. See what happens this time after they recovered that Bobby Humphrey fumble. On the option, this is where Robinson is so dangerous. Inside the 10, about a yard away from the first down, goes Tony Robinson. Joe Godwin with the tackle. What acceleration this quarterback has. Once he makes the decision, he tucks it under his arm and heads south. And that's the end of the third quarter. Tennessee leading 13-7, but watch Tony Robinson turn it upfield in a heartbeat, and he gets the first down. They make the long walk to the far end zone. Round the world through the heat and rain, yeah. Cross the Alps and against the grain, yeah. Wherever Buick Electra went in the world, it left behind new standards of luxury and performance. USA! And it's here to stay, yeah. One and two. Your own test today, yeah. Now, see if Buick Electra lives up to the highest standard of all. Yours. Wouldn't you really rather have a Ace Best Buys. I wonder who he is today. Good evening. Hi. Protect your home with the Family Guard smoke detector. The $2 rebate means it costs just $4.88. Hello, Danny. Hello. Your actual cost for this firefighter is just $4.88 with the exclusive Ace $5 rebate coupon. The Ames Green Sweeper Lawn Rake. And uh, green is nice. <laughs> and at $3.66, a nicely priced October Best Buy. That's the way it is. Ace says the price with the helpful hardware man. Yay! This is Turner Network Television. Nowadays, when a businessman gets stuck in his car, he doesn't have to be just stuck in his car. He can be talking to a client, or a prospective client, or be in touch with his own office. He can be doing a million different things if he has our mobile net cellular car phone service. Just imagine how much more productive you could be with MobileNet. G. No, GTE. In the high-tech world of car stereo, high technology must go beyond what the eye can see. 
Kenwood believes in the essentials, in achieving sound perfection, by building car stereo components that produce sound of startling realism and depth. Sound perfection. It doesn't get any closer than this. For your nearest Kenwood dealer, call 1-800-CAR-SOUND. You are watching the home of the 1986 Goodwill Games. Superstation WTBS. Tennessee now has to drive into the roaring den of the Alabama faithful at Legion Field. Second down one at the eight-yard line. Full house backfield. Robinson play fakes, has the ball, gets protection. Down he goes, hit hard at the 12. Cornelius Bennett and Kurt Jarvis combining. And Robinson appeared to be shaken up on that play. Play action, both tight ends releasing. Left tight end crossing pattern, right tight end corner route. Good job of coverage by Alabama. Kurt Jarvis, number 95, Cornelius Bennett, arrived to put the vice on Tony Robinson. Looks like they're working on his knee, Tim. Right knee, and he's in severe pain, as you can tell right now. Hopefully the injury is not, but Tony Robinson is hurt. Daryl Dickey, who has played very little this year, is warming up to go in, the senior from Gainesville, the backup to Tony Robinson. While we just take a moment here to remind you that today's game is brought to you in part by Buick and your Buick dealers for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality. It's today's Buick. So Robinson is up now. They're helping him off. He looks tender on that right knee. Jarvis cuts off the, the north-south flow, and Bennett arrives, and that's painful, folks. He tries to get down. Oh, oh, boy. His foot was locked in the ground. That brings back bad memories. Don't show that again. Volunteers leading 13-7, 14-30 to go in the game. Third down, four at the 11. Daryl Dickey, the senior backup in at quarterback now. He gives to Davis, who gets to the 10 and no more. Dickey with his second play of this game. One yard. Jarvis makes tackle. Dickey has not been in any ball game until this one. This is his second play all year long. You see him looking up the knee of Tony Robbins. You notice the doctor going to the other knee. He's checking the, the variation and the flexibilities between the medial collateral ligament and uh, on both knees. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt on fourth down. It is good. Tennessee increases their lead over Alabama to 16 to 7 with 13.44 to go in the game. But the story is right there on your screen. The injury to quarterback Tony Robinson. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. For the average renter, the five-door Mercury Lynx has plenty of room. And it's only $29.95 a day. And budget. But budget has another car. One that's more my style. The Lincoln Town Car. Look at this headroom. And even us big shots like budget small price. Only $39.95 a day. Get the economy of luxury. Or the luxury of economy. Go to budget and say, the car, or the car. <laughs> Delta professionals always make you feel like you're on top of the world. Delta gets you there. Tennessee doctor talking to Tony Robinson on the sideline. Still do not know the exact severity of the injury, but it's for sure Robinson won't be back in. I, I would almost say it's for sure. Short kickoff by Tennessee to Humphrey at the eight. To the 40-yard line, Bobby Humphrey. Tackled by 45, Darren Miller. There's the right knee of Tony Robinson. 41-yard kickoff return. And this is the man who makes Tennessee go. The cliche says the straw that stirs the drink for Tennessee.
see. Severe loss. Emotionally, that's really got to affect your football team. It's going to take them a minute to recover from the loss of that young man right there. And you just hate to see that happen. It's got to be a painful thing to watch. Now Alabama trailing 16 to 7 has 13 and a half minutes to see if they can come from behind. Tennessee on a three-game winning streak. Mike Shula. Complete to the 50-yard line to tight end Thornton Chandler. First down, Alabama. Sometimes an injury to a player who is so important to a team. Here's Albert Bell on an isolated shot. Just a little underneath route. Shula really likes the tight end there. They're really developing a, you know, a relationship in terms of uh, thrower and catcher. Tight end can be a really a dangerous weapon and hard to stop in that seam area. On a first down 10, I was going to say, uh, sometimes an injury even to an offensive player if he's a leader like Robinson yeah. can slow down the defense. Let's see if it happens. The Turner to the 43-yard line. Because Robinson is such an emotional leader for Tennessee. We'll have to suck it up defensively here. And there's Tony on the sideline with the ice on that right knee. He got hit from the front. And uh, you saw his foot stick on the turf. When you get that kind of action, usually what you have is, uh, is damage to the, the cruciates, one of the uh, posterior or anterior cruciates, which control the back and forth movement of the knee. Second down three from the 42. Bell in motion. Bobby Humphrey driving for the first down for Alabama. Kelly Ziegler with the tackle. Interestingly, again here, the leading receivers for both of these football teams, Al Bell for Alabama and Tim McGee for Tennessee, have yet to catch a pass in this ballgame. Mike Shula with 116 yards passing. He's 10 out of 19, one interception. Well, Alabama certainly is no stranger to coming from behind. They did it against Georgia to win. They almost made a miraculous comeback against Penn State. They had to measure, but it was a first down at the 39-yard line. 16-7, Tennessee leading Alabama. One of the premier rivalries in college football. These teams started playing in 1901 at West End Park, not far from Legion Field. Alabama won that one 6-0. Now Chester Braggs in a tailback for Alabama, along with Craig Turner. Braggs is number 30. Shula going for Chandler, leaping grab. tackle 20-yard reception for Chandler his second of the day it's pretty good evidence why Mike Shula likes to throw it to Thornton Chandler two things happen here one is he shows his tremendous athletic ability by stretching up and making this catch and the other thing is he's displaying some courage because when you get in that position down the middle you know there's going to be someone distributing some pain Oh, you just feel one of these classic endings coming up to this ballgame. 11.39 to go. Tennessee 16, Alabama 7. Tides ball. First and 10 at the 19 of the Volunteers. Bell in motion. Shula, not much pressure. Bobby Humphrey. See this. I want to know how Mike Shula got this one in there. Bell is perfectly covered, and Richardson are perfectly covered by Tennessee. They've got someone running with Humphrey. The defensive backs just lose sight of the football, and Humphrey comes up with a great catch. Perfectly placed throw. Here's the point after attempt by Van Tippen. It is good. That's Humphrey's second touchdown reception of the year. A courageous grab. He was really stuck by Terry Brown, but fought his way into the end zone. The freshman who grew up in the shadow of Legion Field now hearing the cheers. Working together, making life better. Taking the keys and we're on our way. Skyline. It never stops, there's always something to do. Morning to night, each and every day. Skyline. One of these days we gotta take a vacation. But until then we got places to feed. Skylark. The new Buick Skylark. A little sedan and a lot of Buick. Skylark, Skylark, Skylark. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Now, a world of magic is in your hands. Hey, Dad, Maggie, breath. Panasonic.
presents Omnimovie, a camera and video recorder in one. Capture magic moments forever. Get a close-up, Joe. Yeah. <sighs> Omnimovie uses full-size VHS tapes, plays Hollywood movies, or your own. Yes, right, Santa. Don't miss a single Omnimovie magic moment from Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Alabama has pulled to within two, thanks to that touchdown reception by 26, Bobby Humphrey. You see Haas Johnson riding Dale Jones out of the play, giving Shula time to deliver this perfect strike. Bobby Humphrey used to listen to this crowd from that house. It's just across the street from Section 42 at Legion Field here in Birmingham. Now he's hearing the cheers from the inside after he catches the touchdown pass to pull the Crimson Tide to within two of Tennessee. 11.26 to go in this ball game. Tony Robinson, Tennessee's heart and soul offensively, is out of the ball game with a knee injury. Daryl Dickey, the senior backup quarterback, will have to come in and see if he can keep Tennessee out in front by the narrow two-point margin. Dickey had not played a down, had not thrown the ball at all this year for Tennessee. He's a senior, son of the athletic director. If you look at the stats on that scoring drive, new athletic director, Doug Dickey. This young man played his high school ball down in Gainesville, Florida, where Dickey was associated with the University of Florida. The thing we want to do is say hi. Bob Woodruff, of course, a longtime athletic director in Tennessee, and his wife Trudy at the game. We want to say hi to Bob's dad, Joe, who was a letterman at Georgia in 1913. Yeah. Daryl Dickey on the roll. It's complete to Charles Wilson out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Very small game. He's one out of two now. By the way, Tony Robinson's going into the locker room. We'll get a report, hopefully. You see him, I think, on a cart about to leave in front of the... No, he's on the bench in uh, front of the Tennessee fan down there. It's pretty warm on the field. It was 78 degrees at kickoff, and the sun is out now, so it's pretty hot down there. The crutch is by his side. A poignant story for Tony Robinson. Now Daryl Dickey. has got the weight on his shoulder. Second down eight from the 22, Tennessee. The pitch to Keith Davis. Look at the speed. First down. 20 yards. 28, 29 yards for Keith Davis around the left end. Cooper and Robinson chasing him out of bounds. And Tony Robinson nodding his approval and still cheering despite the pain in his right knee. Nice block by the tight end of uh, Tennessee. Another good block by Galbraith creating that crack. And as you mentioned, Bob, alluded to the speed of Keith Davis. He's something else. Keith Davis now with more yardage than he's had all year. That's his best performance. 127 yards on this day for the freshman from Nashville. They give it to Charles Wilson. He gets about two or three inside Alabama territory. But field position becoming critically important here, of course, as Tennessee has that two-point lead thanks to the three field goals by Reves with 10.56 to go in the ballgame. It has been another classic. Tony Robinson on crutches on the sideline. In the eye formation. Howard, the fullback. Play fake. Here's a reverse to McGee. Needs a block. Gets it, but no yardage and penalty markers go down. That just didn't happen. All day long, Tennessee's been trying to get the ball in the air to Tim McGee. He has no receptions on the day. Tennessee's leading receiver, and they decide to just go ahead and pitch it to him on a reverse. Tennessee clips on the play. You watch and see if this is a clip. Sal does an excellent job. I would not call it a clip. I wouldn't have called it either. It looked like he's, he's working to get his head around the front, and it was on the side. Brent Sal did it. Beautiful job, though, of staying home and keeping that play from developing. Last week, the Auburn-Florida State game, we saw a load of reverses, and nobody played it as well as Sal did on that one. Here's the announcement. Flipping, offense, second down. There's the elephant mascot of the Crimson Tide. We saw a sign earlier that was being paraded around here that had an elephant carrying a machine gun that said Bambo. <laughs> and I guess
guess you know the takeoff on that from the movie of a similar name. Second down, 27, Tennessee, after the penalty from their own 32. Darrell Dickey will throw his third pass of the game over the middle. It's incomplete. Just a little bit low, a little bit too tough to hold on to, intended for Vince Carter. So the drive stalls here for Tennessee, or at least it's stalled thus far. It'll be third down, 27 at the 32, and there goes Tony Robinson. And if the injury is as serious as it looks, there go a lot of the hopes of the volunteer fans this year. Tennessee 2-1-1 one and one coming into this football game. They have the lead by two here, but it has been a very expensive lead over Alabama. And that's that uh, could make an editorial comment on the artificial turf because what happened was his foot stuck. On third down, 27, draw play Davis. Up two yards, down he goes at the 33. And now these... Crimson Tide fans starting to play a role in the game as they are just exercising their lungs. Listen to this crowd. <laughs> I guess you can get the symbolism <laughs> of that sign. Get that guy's name. <laughs> oh, somebody will market a product every time you give them a chance. The good old <laughs> U.S. of A. <laughs> Bob Garman with a good punt to Albert Bell at his 24. Down he goes hard, right in his tracks. So it's down to this, folks. Nine minutes, 19 seconds remaining in this game. Tennessee 16, Alabama 14. Crimson tied ball at the 24. Georgia led Alabama late in the opening game of the year, and Mike Shula drove them from behind. The score and beat Georgia. Let's see if he can do the same against Tennessee. The last time they moved the ball down the field, it was through the air. A couple of nice runs, but most of the yards were put away in the air. Shula is 12 out of 21 for 145 yards, one interception on the day. Single setback. Turner. Who gets the ball? And about four yards. Close to the 30-yard line goes Craig Turner. Turner's been one of the favorite receivers again today. That's his seventh reception of the day meaning he only had seven all year coming into this game seven for 33 so he's had 14 catches on the year now he's running that flare control pattern out of the fullback position he just kind of heads straight down the line then will turn up field Shula looks at the tight end if the linebackers back at the tight end he'll pop the fullback second down five Woo! Alabama First down and more to the 43. Andre Kramer with the tackle. Alabama keeping it simple, relying on that offensive line, relying on the mistake-free football they've tried to play. Remember, the couple of series prior to this, Alabama fumbled twice on one series, came back in, Humphrey fumbled on the first play, and Tennessee got a field goal out of it. So holding on to the ball has not been something that's come naturally to Alabama today. down from the 42 of the time. Humphrey and Turner in the backfield. Shield with only a four-man rush. Over the middle of Humphrey. For the 37 of Tennessee. Boom. This drive started at the Alabama 39-yard line. Shula has done this all year long. This ball is thrown right on time and perfectly. It has to be. See you throw it right over the top of Ziegler before the safeties could get there and make the play. Beautifully thrown football. A, a dangerous throw, but beautifully thrown. I say dangerous because sometimes a tip ball, as happened earlier in the game, uh, results in an interception down the middle. First down, 10 at the 37. Again. Oh, it's picked off by Tennessee's Dale Jones. We told you he was the big play man. Whoa, that was one of the shortest interceptions of a pass ever, about a foot and a half. Point blank. Took the bullet in the chest. Big, big turnover. And Alabama has committed the same number of turnovers today as they had the entire season coming into this game. Perkins telling Shula, nothing you can do about it. Just goes to lay it out there. Jones bats Whoa. the ball and then makes the catch. He was just throwing that little swing pass out to the fullback. 
Alabama had started that drive at their 25 and had driven and were really moving the ball until that turnover. Today, two interceptions, one fumble lost by Alabama. Tennessee had the one interception, no fumbles. That's been the story of the game. 16-14, Tennessee, 7.43 to go. Darrell Dickey replacing the injured Tony Robinson, showing good movement himself, incomplete. At the 40-yard line, he was looking for tight end 81, Jeff Smith. Dickey showing some mobility there. And there's young Mike Shula, who's thrown two interceptions today. Very unusual for him. One was a tip ball and thrown a little bit behind Chandler, and that one was one of the most unusual things I've ever seen. Well, they talk about Dale Jones, the the intangibles about a player like Dale Jones. Who's going to count on a on an interception of a pass from three yards away? That's right. Every time we've seen Dale Jones play, he's come up with big ones. Second and ten from the 47. Howard and Keith Davis in the backfield. This is Davis on the sweep left. What a great job of running in traffic. He goes down hard at the 47. John Han with a tackle. We've seen a lot of football games, about 60 in the last three years and a month, and I haven't seen hitting much harder at any of them than this game. There's a penalty marker on the play at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion, Tennessee. 7.30 to go in the game. Tennessee with a two-point lead, 16-14. And you ask how important is Tony Robinson when he goes injured. Of course, heart and soul of the team is very important. But he had also rushed for 43 yards in the third quarter. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Offense, second down. I could, you could say that uh, Tony Robinson is as valuable to this offense as, say, uh, Ken Austin would be to Mississippi. And Mississippi is kind of crippled without Austin. Second down, 15 volunteers at the 43-yard line of Tennessee. Three-man rush. Dickey's going to keep it. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's all Wayne Davis, who was injured in the first half, is back in there for Alabama, as we might mention is Godwin. Both of them had been shaken up for Alabama. Both have gone back into play. So it'll be third down 10. Tennessee now at the 48 after they intercepted the pass. They haven't been able to do much. Over the last three years, the average score of this game was 32 to 31. We're seeing much better defense this afternoon. A lot of courage on defense. People answering the call. It's a classic college football matchup. 16-14, Tennessee, 6.47 to go in the ball game. Good protection for Dickey. Incomplete. Had two receivers in the exact same area. It would have been a first down reception had Charles Wilson held on to the pass, but Smith and Wilson were both in that area. So Dickey now is one for five passing the ball. Tennessee will have to turn it over again. Alabama will have six minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the game. There is Albert Bell. He has not had a reception in this ball game. They've been double covering him a lot, Bob, in their nickel scheme. They've been uh, taking him away from Alabama, forcing them to go other places. Into the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20 yard line and once again the kicking game is playing a big role three field goals for Tennessee that gives them a two point lead and now the field position battle will take place in the next six minutes and 34 seconds. This is Turner Network Television. When you were born you had no idea how fierce the competition was going to get. All those eager achievers determined to win the race for success. Being good isn't good enough anymore. To earn and keep your piece of the pie, you need an unfair advantage. A new way to make the most of your special talents and creativity. Hard work and ambition alone aren't enough to keep you moving up. Introducing Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. The computer with better color graphics, more speed and power than any other at its price. The only computer that lets you work on up to four things at once and makes every one of them more creative. If you want a better chance of winning the games you play today, you need Amiga, the first personal computer to give you a creative edge.
That was a 52-yard punt by Garmin, but I'm sure he would have been glad to give away some of the statistics to get this ball downed inside the 20 of Alabama. Went into the end zone for a touchback, and here comes Mike Shula and the Crimson Tide trailing by two. 6.34 remaining in the game. Bell, without a reception thus far, in motion. Here is Hill. Six yards. Darren Miller, 45, the tackle for Tennessee. And that would, that's what you need on first down. Now it's second and four. You have a choice. If you want to, you can throw the ball. Most probably, they'll just run it a couple of more times. Take their time. Taking it down the field. Boy, look at that game up there in Nashville. 13-10. Georgia leading Vanderbilt at halftime. Nebraska has gone back out in front of Missouri, as you saw. Vandy playing tough. Very injured against Georgia, too. First down run, Alabama, out to the 32-yard line. It was Murray Hill, the freshman from Atmore. So Georgia not having a first half cakewalk against Vanderbilt. Georgia with one loss in the SEC to Alabama in the opener. Can, of course, ill afford another one. Most people thought they'd have a cakewalk against Vanderbilt. Of course, the second half remains to be seen. And here, Tennessee with one loss in the league. Cannot afford another either. Most feel that one loss is all that you can have to win the SEC this year. Alabama undefeated. Kentucky, as of now, also undefeated. Florida not eligible. First and 10 from the 31. Here comes Bell on the reverse. He has the blocks. Out of bounds. First down at the 47-yard line. Kramer knocked him out. Still inside Alabama territory. So neither wide receiver, leading receiver, Bell or McGee's caught a pass. So they decided to just hand it to him, I guess. 16-yard game. After every play, you're looking at the con contained responsibility away from the flow of the uh, play. The coaches, obviously, George Hens Henshaw up in the booth, saw something that he liked and came back with a reverse. I'm sure he's been saving it for a couple of uh, series because Tennessee has really been hot in pursuit. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Tennessee 16, Alabama 14. First down Alabama at their own 47. They give to Murray Hill. Inside Tennessee territory to about the 48. Hit by 16, Tommy Sims, who has nine tackles today from the strong safety position for the Volunteers. Talking to Dick Bumpus before the game, who coaches the inside linebackers, a former uh, great Arkansas player, and he said uh, they had to move around a little bit because they felt like they were a little bit outsized in the middle. Uh, one of the things that concerned them the most was just having the ball run right at them. Both these teams have 21 first downs on the day. Score 16-14, second down four. Greg Turner, no first down. Held shy of the 45-yard line. Ray Perkins with another ulcer game. This is not one that's uh, relaxing on the sideline. 75,808 here at Legion Field. Well, that's the life of a coach in the SEC, isn't it? Week after week after week. Quality opposition. Again, we said Georgia should have a cakewalk at Vanderbilt. They have a three-point lead at halftime. It's back to Hill. He is denied the first down on the third down and three. Darren Miller with a tremendously big defensive play for the Volunteers. And Alabama will have fourth down out here at midfield, and they're going to call timeout, and Shula's going to go to the sideline. You would think with 4.05 to go, they'd give the ball up. We watch this again, a toss. Tennessee defender doing an excellent job of turning that play in, not letting it develop. It's Darren Miller making the stop. Well, there's Shula talking to Perkins, and Albert Bell is coming into the game from the sideline. And Tim, uh, again, I, I leave this to your expert analysis. Uh, fourth down four at midfield at the 47-yard line of Alabama with 4.05 to go. Uh, it surprises me that they're considering not giving the ball up. Well, there's plenty of time left to go in the football game. Uh, obviously, that Perkins and his staff have studied film all week long in preparation for Tennessee. They know the capabilities of their football team. I think they have to fear. They can. They're certainly a lot more apt to take a risk without Tony Robinson, a quarterback for Tennessee. That's one thing they're talk, talking about, and, and it looks as though they're going for it. And I'm imagine. They Here. probably have a pretty good feel for the defense that's going to be called. They've given Shula a couple of plays, and he'll make the decision on the line of scrimmage. It's a long fourth and four at the 47. 
you almost have to throw the ball I would assume fourth and four. Well we have Murray Hill and Craig Turner in the backfield. The receivers are Greg Richardson and Al Bell both split up there to the top of your screen. Big fourth down decision by Ray Perkins. Tennessee's coming with everybody. Incomplete after the tremendous pressure on the blitz by Tennessee. The gamble fails by the tide. The volunteers take over at their own 47 yard line. Murray Hill comes out of the backfield. Headed toward the sideline. Just a mess up in communication, I imagine. Probably an option route, Bob, and the receiver read one thing and Mike Shula read something else. I yep. thought I thought maybe it would have been a short option to Murray Hill, but he took the sideline and stayed out there, so there was no doubt about what he was supposed to do. Tennessee, first and ten, their own 47, leading 16-14, 4-0-1 to go in the game. Tony Robinson hurt, Daryl Dickey at quarterback. Keith Davis, flags down, Davis down at the 50. Kurt Jarvis with the tackle. We recap what happened to Tony Robinson. Tony Robinson on a scramble, hit by two or three Alabama players, and tore up his right knee. We do not know how serious the injury is, but he went off the field in crutches. Is in the locker room now. Dickey has come in and gone one out of five passing for only two yards. This penalty against Tennessee. Something else that happens when you change quarterbacks and you're not used to it. Dickey had not played all year. Illegal formation, offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. Still first down. I said he hadn't played. Dickey had been in the game a time or two, a one or time uh, earlier, but had not thrown a pass all year. We talked about the injury to Tony Robinson. Here it is again. That's his right knee, right there. Oh, mercy. Yeah, that's, you know, that's obvious on that one. Double tight ends, first and 15, Tennessee, back at their 42 now. Pitch to Davis, needs the block, gets outside, great speed. Good containment by Alabama, but Keith Davis still gets it inside Alabama territory to about the 47-yard line. Davis now around 135 yards rushing the ball this afternoon. Most importantly here is field position and the time. 317 remaining in this game. Alabama has two timeouts left. Tennessee all three of theirs. Of course, Tennessee will try to be just churning the clock, and it's running right now. And lead by two, 16-14. Okay, at this point in the game, no more bend but not break. You got to come after him. You got to pressure Tennessee's offense. Something Alabama is not used to doing. Look for 97 Cornelius Bennett, their big play guy. See if he can do something like Dale Jones did for Tennessee. Hand off to the fullback, Howard, short of the first down. That was second down four. It's going to bring up third down and about a yard or so. And Johnny Majors tenaciously clinging to a two-point lead, 16-14. He was a fighter and a scrapper as a player. He's no different as a coach. He's assembled a fine, fine staff. Walt Harris has done a great job as a mentor of his quarterbacks. And oh, listen to this crowd. It's deafening at Legion Field. Third down one at the 44, Tennessee. Davis. First down or close to it. It'll depend on where they spot it. He went down right at the flag. It looks to me as though he got the first down. What really surprises me is defensively, and some some people, this is a first down. Some people might not understand that, this, but at the risk of confusing some folks, they were in corner support, the wide receiver, way out to the wide side of the field. If the corner is in primary support, he can't get in to turn that play in to make something happen fast enough for it before it develops. Usually, you got to get in some kind of a safety support in that particular situation, short yardage. Tennessee got the first down. Time all the way down to 130 remaining. Tennessee first down from the 42. Hand off for about three right up the middle to William Howard. John Han with a tackle. Alabama trailing by two. Clock stops at 121. Alabama uses one of their two remaining timeouts. So 
but Tennessee took over at midfield when Ray Perkins went for it on a fourth down and Mike Shula couldn't hit his receiver. He looked for Al Bell, but under tremendous pressure, couldn't connect. There's the two-point story and the story on the face of young Mike Shula. We'll be right back. For everyone working to keep the customer satisfied, this bug's for you. Nobody else can do the job the way you do. So here's to you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. Unmistakably sharp. Unmistakably fine. Unmistakably warm. Unmistakably yours and mine. Unmistakably right. Down to the last detail. Tonight is unmistakably. Tennessee with three wins in a row in this series, going for number four. Minute 21 remaining, second down seven. Tennessee at the 39 of Alabama. Here's Davis. Davis down at the line of scrimmage, gain of maybe a yard. Brent Soule with the tackle. Davis has had a day. He has rushed 25 times for 142 yards, received three passes for 44, and has accounted for 166 yards of the Tennessee offense. And there's Daryl Dickey, who came in in place of the injured Tony Robinson, Tennessee. I think defensively, when you set up your game plan, you go in by taking away what the opposition does best. They wanted to take away Timmy McGee. They wanted to take away the long pass. They've been successful in doing that. Tennessee's gotten more yards rushing the ball than Alabama would like to have given them, but it's been a pretty good defensive football game. Now, we understand that this is Alabama's last timeout. The scoreboard here says there is one timeout remaining. So we'll check on the sideline and see for sure. We believe they are out of timeouts. Each team allowed three per half, and I believe Alabama's out of timeouts. That's three. That's one on this play with play before, and then when they considered going for it on fourth down, they took a timeout there, so that's three. There you go. And that uh, with a minute 11 to go in the ball game. Again, the scoreboard showing otherwise, but our statistics are accurate, and I will always count on Tim's memory. <laughs> the heck with the computers. 111 to go. The sideline conversation concluded, and Dickey, who has come in here, only gone one out of five passing for only two yards, but that's not what his job was in replacing Tony Robinson. His job was to keep the ball from being turned over in bad position, and he's done that thus far. Third and six at the 38. Davis hit in the backfield, loss of about three. Clock at 106, 104, 103, and counting. This will be fourth down. Just takes the inside hard. They're trying to trap him, but before they can get there, Bennett's got a hold of the back. Uh, clock continues to count. It's 51, 50. Tennessee can, of course, let that 25-second clock elapse, take the five-yard delay of game penalty, give them a little more punting room to try to punt it to Alabama inside their 10, and they'll probably do just that. The 25-second clock is blocked from my view here, thanks to so many folks on the sideline here at Legion Field. But you can see that Tennessee is going to let it just down. There it goes. The flag is down. The 25-second clock has elapsed. And the game clock stops at 29 seconds in the game. Now, to say it isn't over is a cliche till it's over. But it's 16-14. Alabama is but a field goal away. They have no timeout, but they have a great young, heady quarterback in Mike Shula and a, and a tremendous uh, under two minute game plan, as you saw against uh, Georgia earlier in the year. It's tough to develop an under 30 second game plan. That uh, <laughs> takes a little bit more skill with no timeouts. And uh, Van Tiffen, they've got a tremendous weapon in Van Tiffen. He can nail it. Uh, I think he hit a 57 yarder against Texas A&M, so he's got the big leg. Bob Garman goes in to punt for Tennessee. He has been shaky as a punter. He did not punt well against Florida by his own admission and that of his coach Johnny Majors. He has not punted all that well today in terms of getting it out of bounds inside the 10 like he's wanted. And Alabama, you would think, would be going all out here for a punt block. 
down with 29 seconds to go. That's one of the procedures they have. The punt block coming into a play since Bobby Bowden made such a success of it at Florida State the last few years. Let's see what Alabama's special teams can do. Al Bell is back to take the punt at his own 10. So 29 seconds remain in the game. Alabama's out of timeouts. Tennessee leads by two, 16-14. They don't get it. Bad punt. Garmin shanks it badly to the right. Five seconds he laps off the clock. They march it upfield here, and they will say that this ball went out of bounds at the 33-yard line. So Garmin gets off a less than choice punt here in Alabama with 24 seconds. They are 67 yards away from the end zone, but much closer, about 35 yards or so away from field goal range. What do you think's the outside uh, on Van Tiffen? How far can he hit it, Bob? Van Tiffen's longest has been 52 yards. He is two out of two, 50 plus this year. He's got the leg. Julep throws it as he's hit. It is not a grounding. He was throwing in the area of a receiver, but he went down under great pressure. 77 Richard Cooper was back there. Clock down to 20 seconds. It'll be second down 10. Tennessee with this gambling defense will just be coming. You can bet on that on every play. You'd think most teams would be in prevent, but Tennessee didn't prevent when they got into that tie with UCLA in their season opener. Richardson and Bell split wide to the right side. To the left side is running back Murray Hill. This time Tennessee is prevent. Only three man rush. Shula. It's caught by Bell, taken right out of the hands of the Tennessee player, but the clock runs 11, 10, and stops there so they can reset the chains. Tennessee, ha Alabama has the plays called, so they'll be up. They are at the 44-yard line. Remember, you add 17. It's a 61-yard field goal from here. You can count it down on it, depending on what Alabama can get on this. Shula throws it out of bounds, almost picked off. He just rifled it out of bounds to stop the clock. Now six seconds left. I'd have thought they'd have tried to have gotten something on that play, because there's Van Tiffen. There you see, he can kick it. 57, 53, 52, and 51. He's two out of two, plus 50 this year. And it could come down to that. We said at the beginning it could be a kicking game battle, and we had a messed up punt. Alabama's going to try to get one play with six seconds left. Shula just throws it out of bounds again. Clock down to four. Lost two. I didn't quite get that one. Here comes Van Tippen. The line of scrimmage is the 44. Add seven to the 51, and 10 is a 61. Well, we've seen Kevin Butler hit him from that distance. On that last alignment, they're looking to see if Tennessee was out of position. Maybe they could get a couple yards. If not, they're going to make sure that this is the last play of the game. Got the distance. No, it does not have the distance. It is short by about five yards. Clock to double zero. The Volunteers have defeated Alabama at Legion Field. And that young man came up just a little bit short on the 61-yard field goal attempt. What a ball game we saw here today. But Tennessee paid dearly for this victory, losing quarterback Tony Robinson. Johnny Majors, four wins in a row over Alabama. Prior to that, Alabama had defeated Tennessee 11 times in a row. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. When you deserve the best, yeah Standing out Apart from all the rest, yeah No 
of all the discerning people who buy Buicks more by Century than any other. Century. You know that you belong, yeah. Century. Keeps rolling right along, yeah. Head into the future in this century. The Buick Century. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Delta gets you there. To Los Angeles. Boston, Chicago, and New York. Also serviced to all of Florida's major resorts. Delta also gets you to Europe, Hawaii, and the islands. In all, Delta serves more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. For traditional American values, flip through the pages of the big fall shopper circular from True Value Hardware Stores. You'll find the sturdy True Temper 24-inch leaf rake for just $4.88, and this weatherproof 32-gallon True Value trash can for only $7.77. Get the True Value fan forced quartz heater for just $46.88, and choose the two-pack of GE household glue or bathroom caulk for only $1.99 each in the fall shopper circular from participating True Value Hardware Stores. Tennessee 16, Alabama 14, Johnny Majors, head coach at Tennessee on the sideline, uh, who's played against Alabama right here at this field. Uh, coach, first of all, we want to talk to you and congratulate you on your victory, but I know you're feeling a little less than enthusiastic because of the injury to Tony Robinson. What's the latest on that? Well, the, only thing, the trainer told me uh, shortly thereafter, in about two or three minutes, I eased over to him, and the trainer didn't think it looks very good. I'd say our chances of having Robinson the rest of the season are probably nil. And it's a great victory for our team. Our team showed so much courage. Our defense, my gosh. It's a very costly victory, but it's a great victory for Tennessee. It's hard to do this four years in a row, and I'm awfully proud of our young men and the great job that our assistant coaches have done. You know, did anybody, what was said after Robinson was injured? We said sometimes when a player of his magnitude goes down, it affects the whole team, but it did not well, affect your defense. I, I, I said something to Ken Donahue, our defensive coordinator. says, Ken, the last quarter, as far as your play calling call goes, Robinson's out. For the game and possibly the season. I said, don't say anything to Walt Harris, our offensive coordinator. But Walt asked me how he was. I says, Walt, Tony's out for the fourth quarter. He said, how's it look, coach? I said, it's not very good. But I said, keep on the right track, keep your spirits. Uh, I want to send it to those two people. I didn't want anybody else to know. I was afraid it might affect our squad, and they were playing very courageously. Well, this puts you in a pretty good position in the SEC race. I know you've got tough, tough games coming up, but this has to be a critical and big victory. I don't know if you've had a bigger one in recent years. This is a great victory. It's a big victory. We've got a very fine football team. This is the biggest blow I've probably ever received as a head coach, but we have some courageous young men, and we've just got to close ranks and uh, keep marching because we've got a heck of a tough schedule with six more games, and this is uh, a whale of a league. Johnny Majors, congratulations on the 16-14 win here today. Thank you. Johnny Majors, head coach at Tennessee, and Tennessee holds on as Van Tiffen attempts but comes up short on what would have been an SEC record 61-yard field goal at the buzzer. What a great ball game as the rivalry continued between Tennessee and Alabama, and the Volunteers have now won four in a row. Alabama now with one loss in the SEC. Tennessee also with one loss in the Southeastern Conference. Only Kentucky, and they have to play at LSU tonight, remains undefeated in Southeastern Eastern Conference in the race. Florida, of course, ineligible. So we hope you've enjoyed the game here from Legion Field. It's been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively crisp, clean taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Buick and your Buick dealers for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality. It's today's Buicks. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, a great place to start. Also brought to you by the Commodore 128 Personal Computer, a higher intelligence at a lower price. By Delta, serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. And by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Next week, we hope you'll join us as we take our TNT cameras to Athens, Georgia, for Kentucky at Georgia. Executive producer, Don Ellis. Producer, Skip Ellison. Our director, Ken Fouts. Associate producer Rodney Triplett, associate director Richard Croker. From Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, this is Bob Neal for Tim Foley and our entire crew thanking you for joining us for Southeastern Conference Football.
Coming up next on most of these stations, Super Football Saturday continues with the Football Action Report.